And once again, those keys to the game presented by the El Paso Las Cruces Chevy dealers. All-time meeting number 112 back at Aggie Memorial for the first time since 2018. The Aggies won the toss. Once again, they choose to defer to half two. So Alamogordo native Brett Money, who knows this rivalry very well. He kicks off to Christian Washington and Sherrod White. Those two guys are deep for UNM. Lobos looking for their fourth straight win against the Aggies. And we'll get a return from Washington, who had a kick return touchdown earlier this year. And it will be poor field position to start for this Lobos offense that made a coaching change on Sunday, Danny. They fired their offensive coordinator, Derek Wareheim, on Sunday. They promoted Heath Reidenauer to interim OC. He is a former high school head coach at Cleveland High. We'll see if the offense looks different this week for UNF. Yeah, you know, that's a it's a good move. It's a good move. He's a very successful coach, and everybody likes to play with him. I made a couple of phone calls to some high school coaches he's competed against, and we'll we'll talk about that as the evening goes on. Gets a little ruckus out there already, a little pushing and shoving. This is a UNM New Mexico State rivalry. We're ready to go, Adam. Miles Kendrick, the starting quarterback, a transfer from Kansas in his only season at UNM. Running back is Nate Jones. They give it to Jones, and he is stuck immediately by Lazarus Williams, who has had a really good year for the Aggie defense. Yeah, Lazarus coming off the edge there. He, he was in full at all. He came down. This is all about assignment uh, responsibility, assignment defense when they start running these options. So now you got to make sure that you don't get confused on where they're looking. So you have to make sure you read your keys and stay with your assignment. Only a gain of three there for Jones. Kendrick likes to run the football. He throws here. It's caught by Luke Weissong, the Albuquerque native. And he's tripped up just past the 35-yard line. He did not play a week ago. His 16th catch this year. He's out of Cleveland High in Rio Rancho. Yeah, just a quick pitch here, right? So we're lining off. We're playing a little back on him. And so it's just a quick pitch out to Luke. Let him get some extra yards running. And he does that. So that'll, it's certainly going to help UNM to have him back for this game. See if we can't tighten up on that secondary just a bit. Song, the former high school Gatorade player of the year in the state of New Mexico. A bunched look in this formation for UNM. Kendrick rolls to his left. Heavy pressure. Now he'll decide to run the opposite direction before he's swarmed down by Chris Ojo. Nowhere to go there for Kendrick, who can really, really run, Danny. Yeah, he's a good runner. And the nice thing about uh, the Aggies, we had this week off. Um, this week has let us get our legs back under. As I talked to a lot of the coaches, they talked about the speed that was able to come back with our legs, you know, getting that extra week in there. And let's just see, we have a lot of hats to the ball. We have people flying around. They promised me there's one thing you'll see is you will see lots of Aggies flying to the ball tonight. Second down for UNM. No gain on the previous run for Kendrick. This time he'll pitch it to Nate Jones, a former UCLA commit. And he maybe gets two. He'll call it two. Past the 35, up to the 36. UNM has been awful this year on third down, by the way. And they've only been converting on 14% of their third down since their opener against Maine when they were 9 for 12. And I, and I think part of that is why Coach Gonzalez said, let's just make a change. Let's just give, us our, uh, give ourselves a chance on this third down. So let's see what, what uh, the new offensive trainer comes out with on a play call here. Line to gain is the 44. A quick toss on a swing pass. It's caught by Christian Washington, the running back. And he gets first down yardage up near midfield. Only his third catch this foul. year, true freshman from San Diego. Number 93 deep. Yeah, good call. You know, that he was thinking Aggies are coming, the and they did. Lots of Automatic people in the down. backfield. You kind of let them through there. That's the, the sign that's going to be a quick pitch out there and a nice play call and got the first down and some some extra yardage, it looks like. And that'll push it all the way down to the Aggie 36. So it turns out to be a huge gain on third down for UNF. It was rough in the passer. That was the penalty adding the yardage. Here's Washington on the ground. He's a good-looking young freshman. This is one of the youngest teams around the country. Lobo's the 10th youngest team nationally. Going to go with a little tempo. Going to line up quickly, see if he can get Aggies just uh, standing around. This time, Kendrick will pull it, and he's upended by Andre Selden. Bryce Jackson also there. 
Outside of Jones, Kendrick, the best runner for UNF. An offense that only averages 19 points per game. A year ago, they averaged 12 a game, worst in the country. Lobos trying to go to three and four, looking for their fourth win in a row against the Aggies. The Aggies have not defeated the Lobos since 2017, the bull year. Pistol back is Jones. He'll stick it in his belly, and he tries to shimmy through a hole, but there isn't a hole there. Trevor Brohard was in on it, so was Justin Segura. We talked earlier, Danny, Brohard has to play well for the Aggies to have success tonight. Yeah, but both those middle linebackers have to play well in order for us to have success. Like you said, Trevor from Las Lunas, he knows these guys. He sees them. It's like when I grew up here and played here, you read about them all summer long and everything else, so you know all about them, and this is one game that you put on your calendar that says, I'm going to turn it up, I'm going to get going. Look for Trevor to be everywhere tonight, Adam. Deep back is Jones again. They toss it to him. Nowhere to go. Linwood Crump, the transfer from Colorado State, was all over it. Man, that's that's a good read right there. And he just came, sniffed it out, came screaming into the backfield. I, I spoke with Coach Odom, who's the defensive back coach, and we talked about these this offense that UNM has. And he says, you know, we have to read our keys, watch the eyes, and when we see it, we have to get there and make a play. I think he saw it, and he did make a play. That was a great job by Linwood right there. Third down and long for Kendrick in the UNM offense. Out of Morgan Hill, California, played three years at Kansas, made four starts for the Jayhawks. We should know, too, the Lobos have had a ton of issues in the kicking game recently. The Aggies will try to stop them on a third and long. Kendrick gets loose. He gets just past the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to lead up to fourth down for UNM. Yeah, for a minute there, I thought he was going to break containment and be a, a jailbreak in the wide open there. Lots of blitzes here. You see the stunts have a little loop up front there. Chris Ojo chasing along with um, um, with the rest of the guys there. I think uh, we have Bryce Jackson finishing off that tackle. This is a 44-yarder for Luke Drezwicki. He's only attempted three field goals this year. He is one for three. The kick is away, and it is good. We didn't know if it was going to be George Steinkamp, who's attempted seven field goals, or Drizwicki, who's only attempted three. But it's Drizwicki who makes just his second field goal this year. So that's a good sign for Danny Gonzalez and the Lobos getting points on the board and maybe fixing some of those issues in their kicking game. Yeah, you know, part, part of uh, what the Lobos have run into is that a few games, Adam, as we've talked about before, is that they've been up. That's that's not the problem. The problem is, is how do they continue on there? So, um, you know, this is um, now it's the Aggies' turn to, to get in there and see if they can't put some points on the board. Tony Sanchez used to play for the Aggies. Now he's a coach, a wide receivers coach. He knows this rivalry well, and we caught up with him earlier this week. There's no doubt about it. I mean, obviously, you know, with a new staff, it's teaching the staff about it, teaching, you know, everybody off the field about it. And then, you know, the kids that have been here, they know about it. But then there's a lot of new faces around here, and they need to understand the importance of it. So, you know, at the end of the day, you can't ever be over the top about any one game because you got to go out and you got to execute. But there should be a fire inside of you that brings out a little bit more in those big rivalry games. Danny, he gave a spirited speech to the Aggies before they played UTEP, and I'm sure he talked to a lot of folks this week as well about this rivalry and what it means. Jonathan Brady on the return past the 25-yard line. It's always good to have somebody on the staff who really gets it, and Tony Sanchez gets it. You talked to him for a while yesterday. I, I did. Um, what a great coach. Is. We're glad to have him. We can look at the return here, but I did ask you know did do they know how important this is do they know what it's about and he said oh i've been bringing it um, so it's great that he's there he's showing the passion talked about some of his guys to get more involved so see if he can get more of those wide receivers involved uh, but but a good guy to have on our staff he has run into this defense of course when he was at unlv so we shared some thoughts there we can talk about later as well gavin franks the starting quarterback once again his fourth start his third in a row and we get a penalty flag during the snap. Oh, no. 
Full start, 78 offense. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. That's our Gabriel Preciado, left tackle from Imperial Beach, California. Redshirt senior. And if, that, if there was movement there, it was very slight. I didn't see much. So that pushes back the Aggies. First down and 15. In the backfield with Frakes is Jamani Jones. Now he motions to Gavin's left. Frakes will roll left. He pumps. He tosses. He has Suarez go. He makes the catch. Danny, he's a walk-on. And he has looked really good in practice during his career. He's a grad student now from Farmington, New Mexico. He comes in, he makes a catch, and maybe he sets the tone. And here we go. We're going to go a little tempo there. I like that. It takes all types to get in there and help him. Rascone gets 13. They swing it out for Cordell David. Somebody the Aggies are trying to get more involved in the offense here this week. He picks up four. You know, Coach Sanchez had nothing but great things to talk about Cordell. He said he's the guy. He could be the future of really moving us out and doing great things. He's got a big frame. He's fast. He can get it done. I know he had a little injuries early on there, but he really got that first down for us. So that's a nice play right there. Gavin Franks, a freshman from Norman, Oklahoma. Norman North High School. Pistol back is Jamani Jones. Play action fake, and the pass is deflected, intended for Cordell David. This rocky long defense, Danny, they like to pressure and blitz, correct? And Gavin Franks is going to see a lot of pressure in this game, right? He is going to see pressure from all kinds of angles. So you see everyone up on the line of scrimmage, and everyone will get up there. Some will drop, some will loop, uh, some will all come. And so he's going to see lots of pressure at the line. Be patient, try to pick it up. Gavin also has to be a little patient in there. He feels it. He has to get rid of it. That was a good knockdown right there because that slant could have went for extra yards. And that was Justin Harris who got his hand on it. Heavy pressure again, escaping his freaks, and he is two-hand touched, if you will, out of bounds by A.J. Odoms, who was trying to make sure he did not have a late hit, so he kind of just gently touches freaks, a gain of three for Gavin Freaks. Now, Gavin's not afraid to pull down the ball and run it, right? So a lot of pressure. He got pressure on his face, and so he didn't sit in there and take the sack. He moved out of the pocket to create extra room. And I like that he got out there at him, and he, and he was like, oh, I'm gonna, just going to pretend like I'm throwing it to the ball deep. There was no one there, but he's trying to get the defense just to bite and get some extra yardage in there. Third down and six. The Aggies 33% on a third down this year. Motion in is Jonathan Brady. Franks with time to throw. A lot of time to throw. Plants and tosses, and it is incomplete. It was bobbled by Tomas Whitford, maybe broken up. Whitford, one of the favorite targets the last couple of years for Aggie quarterbacks, just could not hang on. Yeah, I think he saw him, but by the time he saw him, that there was, the defense was back there and was stalking him. They knew that he was there. He was getting a little pressure in the backfield, so you can see the pressure. Tomas, you see him from the left of your screen, do a little hook in there. He's open, but everyone is standing around waiting for him mm -hmm. to throw that way or look that way. And when they did, they were on it, nothing there. And that was a good play late by A.J. Halsey, the true freshman from Missouri City, Texas, a former first-team All-State pick in Texas at Fort Bend Marshall. Good punt by Josh Carlson. And a fair catch is called for by Tremarius Lewis. So the Lobos are pinned deep again. They haven't made a field goal. Nothing for the Aggies on their first series. It's the Rio Grand Rivalry at Aggie Memorial. I think the key for both teams is, uh, you know, turnovers and being able to run the ball. You know, who's going to run the ball best and who's going to get some, who's going to be able to take advantage of big plays. And, you know, we need 10 or 12 big plays. So that could be through throwing the deep ball. It could be throwing, you know, a run because we got some guys that can pop it, pop it, you know, hope they make a mistake two or three times. Lobos rotating quarterbacks for the third straight game. It was Justin Holiday at quarterback. An option pitch to Sherrod White goes nowhere. Now Holiday will head off and we'll get Miles Kendrick back in the game. I see an official over there had to grab a couple of Aggies, a couple of their players because it gets a little uh, chippy. And that's all the games that I played in with, against UNM and UTEP. It's always chippy because you know the importance of the game. But you got to keep it composed somewhat. So you don't want a, a silly penalty, right? Because that really takes you out of it. 
Two weeks ago, C.J. Mott has had some action at quarterback along with Kendrick, and last week it was Holiday. It's Holiday Early who gets a snap, and now Kendrick is back in. He fakes to his right. He looks downfield, then he runs. And he's taken down by Chris Ojo, finished off by Trevor Brohard. No gain on the play. But a flag is down. Well, we see a lot of this anymore, right? So quite trying to get it out quickly. No one there. Everyone was covered. And so lots of hats to the ball. And I don't know if they got someone coming in flying head down. Or let's see what they have. So the referee, Mike Katane, did not have his mic on for the crowd, but we could read his lips. It's targeting our Keyshawn Elliott, and it was Brohard and Ojo earlier, Danny, but it was Elliott who came in as the third defender to finish off the tackle, and they're going to review this and see if it's upheld. Keyshawn Elliott, a freshman, not a starter, but he is a big part of this Aggie defense. Yeah, you know, we go to Keyshawn when we want to have a heavy set in there. Coach, um... Coach has his 4-2-5 defense, which is a little bit like a 3-3-5. And here's the play again. We can see it. And you'll see right at the end there. There's Chris. There's Trevor coming in. And at the hit right there. I'm not sure that I saw it. But but we'll see what they have to say when they review it. But he comes in in the heavy package. So instead of the 4-2-5, we may end up with um, more of a 4-3. Or you have three backers. And he is that third backer in there who can really finish up on running. Strong run support. And there you see a, a break and a run support play where we had all three linebackers in. Yeah, if this call is upheld, then Elliott's done for the day. But as Danny Gonzalez looks on, Danny, you don't think it was targeting, do you? I do not. All right, referee is Mike Catone. He was also the referee a week ago when the Lobos played Wyoming. Here's the call. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Number 22 may stay in the game. Third down. All right. Yeah, I think he led with his shoulder. But, you know, so many of these are just bang, bang, that it's just hard at him. But uh, they had to take a look at it. It's always safety. But, man, it's um, college football or in pros even. It's, there's just a lot of penalties flying around. Lots of backers getting to the ball. I think it is a good talking point early, though, for Jerry Kill. Control your emotions, especially right. if you're a freshman. You've never been in an environment quite like this. Yeah, good point. Third down and nine for the Lobos. Out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, about a three-hour trip. Their fans have traveled well. What a rivalry. All-time meeting number 112. My partner, Danny Nee, wanted to put the shoulder pads back on today. <laughs> he was so amped up for this one. You Timeout, University of New Mexico. This is their first time out of the half. 30-second timeout. All right, so the Lobos call a timeout as the time was about to expire on the play clock. It, it's hard to explain, I think, Danny, for somebody in your shoes because, you know, a lot of us did not play in this rivalry, but you did. So you can kind of explain to folks what it means and why this week is different for players and for fans. Yeah, well, so growing up in Albuquerque and being around the area, this is the one game that everyone always comes back to. So there's lots of people like there is tonight. So all the phones call, all of the fun, it's all in, all in fun, right? It's all of the needling, and it just happens all week, which just amps the players up to be ready to go. Third and nine for UNN. Kendrick throws, and it's incomplete. Broken up by Mackay Miller, who's had a good first year in this program, a transfer from Miami, Ohio. Boy, Mackay was really with him the whole time, and I think there was just one guy they had eyes for in the pattern who was coming in with a little skinny post or a seam route in there, and Mackay was just on him right there and jumped over there, got that left arm in there to break it up. Nice play. So the Lobos will have to punt. The first punt for Aaron Rodriguez, who leads the country in punts. He's averaging seven per game. He had seven a week ago in a loss against Wyoming in Albuquerque. Rodriguez, a transfer from Mizzou. Rodriguez will get it away. This is Lawrence Dixon who calls for a fair catch and handles at the 39-yard line. 
So we'll step aside here late in quarter one. Three nothing Lobos. A 45 yard boot for Rodriguez in the Rio Grande rivalry. Of course, the Lobos have longtime head coach Rocky Long on their staff as their defensive coordinator. Played QB at UNM 50 plus years ago. Was the head coach at UNM. Won a school record 65 games, late 90s, and then through 08. Then he went to San Diego State. Both coaching staffs very, very good, and they understand this rivalry at a high level, too. Gavin Frakes back to work for the Aggie offense with under six left here in the opening quarter. This is possession number two for the Aggie offense. They had a punt on their first possession. First carry for Star Thomas, who two games ago ran for 144 against Hawaii, but he was really held in check two weeks ago against FIU. So we're going to give it up the middle. We're going to try to establish the run there. Watch how fast the hole closes. UNM, like New Mexico State, is they're, they're very fast at closing to the ball. In this case, there was a hole created, but it closed in a hurry as they shut it down from the second level in, in a matter of seconds. Aggies will use three or four running backs, Jones, Thomas, Watkins, and then sometimes Tim Gans. And this play is botched, and Gavin Frakes is lucky that the ball didn't pop loose. A loss on the play for Frakes in the Aggie offense. Flag does come in, though, on the far side of the field. Offside, number 44 defense. Wow. Five-yard penalty, remain second down. Yeah, sometimes you wonder how they get the big jump and fast jump. Well, if they jump a little bit, then they're able to get in the backfield because that play was going nowhere. He blew it up before it even had time to establish, but he got a little little jump to it, so that'll cost him, and uh, we'll do it again. And it shows you, too, how much pressure this Lobo defense shows. That's a linebacker, Rico Hanna, who's called for offside. Sixth year collegiately. He's been at UNM since 2019, senior from Alabama. So the Aggie offense catches a break. Second down now and four yards to go. They fake it to Thomas. Heavy front side pressure. Caught by the freshman Trevor Stevens. His first collegiate catch. And he rumbles inside the red zone. The young man from Lubbock. A big play in the rivalry. Coronado High School checking in from Lubbock, Texas. Love it. This little dragon here. So this is the tight end play is really what uh, Wyoming burnt. Uh, UNM last week on same thing here. So they spun out a little bootleg He sneaks Trevor into the flats and dumps it to him in space and he just gets some extra yardage and boy He's fired up holding mm. number 85 of the offense 10 yard penalty The result of the plays the first down Well Danny that is a tight end who's called for a hold and it's a tight end who made the catch. Whitford called for the hold, and Stevens made the catch. Well, the multiple multiple tight end plays. At the beginning of the year, I remember Coach Gill and Coach Beck talking about that they're going to get multiple tight ends in there and start to do things off the multiple tight end sets. Let's see, there's the hold right there. Looked like he kind of hooked them. Mm. All right, 4.30 to go. It is first down and 10. Running left is Star Thomas. Breaks the tackle. Still on his feet. Zooming inside the 20. And he's inside the 10. First down and goal. The homer Louisiana native does it again. You know, Star Thomas at six foot two, two, uh, 225. We keep thinking, oh, he's just a power guy. He's just a power guy. But against Hawaii, we saw him break some open and really get some yardage in the open space. Same thing here. He gets in the open space, and he gets after it. He's just really trucking down the field there. That's a nice run by Starr. Great blocking up front, too. 37-yard explosion for Thomas, and the play is blown dead. Ball start. 56 offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. All these penalties on this drive is really hurting him here. So had the hold there, had a uh, false start. And so uh, part of that is nerves, trying to trying to find the people that are moving around. So the center, he's looking up to see, well, where are they going? Who's got what block? And he must have just flinched a bit. Mm -hmm. That's Kanan Yarrow, the 
transfer from FCS Southern Utah. He's from Provo, Utah. So now it's first and goal from the 12. Right back to Star Thomas. Nearly trips. And then a flag comes in on the tackle. Holding. Number 88, offense. 10-yard penalty. Remains first down. Thomas was having issues trying to stay on his feet, and then Trevor Stevens, who had the big catch and run earlier, is called here for the hold. You see it right there on the on the right part of your screen right there where he gets his arm across yeah. the middle there and spins him, and, and that's a hold. And so that's too bad. But Starr wasn't going anywhere. He just couldn't get his feet to begin with. It was looked like a, a funny play. Just couldn't get going. But puts us in a hole. Yeah, now the Aggies are pushed back all the way to the 22-yard line. Two running backs set here. Third penalty on the drive. Watkins in the backfield. So is Jamani Jones. They fake it to Jones. Front side pressure. Franks will throw. And it's caught. Amante Watkins. Touchdown Aggies. Well, Adam, before the game started, you talked about, gosh, where, where's Amante? we got to get him in the game. Uh, it's just amazing how you do that sometimes. And here he is. Gets out of the backfield. We lose track. He's a trackster. He's a speedster. And they find him in the open. But I like Gavin's patience in there. He's going to take a pop because they're coming. But Amante gets out of the backfield, right down the field. Gavin takes his time, takes a little pressure, and nice throw. Point after from Alamogordo native Brett Money out of the hold of Josh Carlson. To try to make it 7-3. And the kick is good. Well, Amate Watkins did not have a touch two weeks ago in the most recent game against FIU. They wanted to get him involved in the offense here today. He catches his first touchdown of the year, his third touchdown overall in the previous four. Aggies lead in quarter one. And here it is right here. Lots of pressure, sneaks him out of the backfield, and he just turns around there, keep your eye on the ball, bring it in. Nicely done. Aggie offense only averaging 14 points per game. It's been such an up and down couple of weeks. They played so well offensively with 438 yards of offense two games ago against Hawaii and then only scored seven all in half one last game against FIU. Of course, it was a busy bye week trying to get back on track and beat the Lobos for the first time since 2017. A return again for Christian Washington. He is really dangerous, and he has twisted up around the 20-yard line. Javion Gibson, transfer from TCU, makes the special teams tackle. Another flag is down. This one has been full of laundry. Personal foul. Face pass. Seven of the kicking teams. That 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. Mm. It's a lot of penalties. I don't know if that's like six or something already. And uh, some of these big ones, that those 15-yarders those hurt as well. One of the things Jerry Kill, the man right there, talked about this week is turnovers, penalties. I mean, those are two parts of any ball game, but especially a rivalry game. You want to win the turnover battle, and you want to limit penalties. And right now, the Aggies have not done that. There's Nate Jones, and he somersaults up past the 40, up to the 41-yard line. Lobos will use a number of running backs. Jones, Sherrod White, Christian Washington, and Jaden Hullaby. A gain of seven for Jones out of Bellflower, California. Number six, Cyrus Dumas in on that tackle. I just like the way he closes. He he sees it, his eyes are in the right spot, and when he recognizes it, he's got great closing speed. It's Jones in the backfield with the quarterback, Miles Kendrick. Right back to Jones, and he has enough for the first down. Inside the 45, down to the 44. Gain of six for Jones. This one's chippy down there, Danny. <laughs> My goodness. 
<laughs> There's a lot of lecturing going on, isn't there? It was the, it was the Aggies last time, so now we get to get uh, equal time and got a couple low-world offensive linemen who don't want to get up so fast. And um, hey, it it matters a lot. It's it's um, it's everything's all out. Final minute 45 here in the opening quarter. The Aggies won the toss. They chose to defer, so UNM got the ball first. A little trickery here. This is Luke Weissaw. Changes directions down the far sideline, and he is taken down by Cyrus Dumas. That was a good-looking play there for first-time offensive coordinator Heath Reidenauer. Yeah, that's a great call. By, by coach. You, certainly, I, I think that if we look at this, it looked like someone got held as he's coming around there. See that right there? But they didn't call it. Officials right there. So great big long play that really pushes him down into Aggie territory. Gain of 33 for Song, who's a speedster. Former high school Gatorade player of the year in track in addition to football in New Mexico. Christian Washington, the freshman from San Diego once again. Final minute here in the first quarter. Gain of four for Washington, who did not play a week ago. A lot of guys were held out for what Danny Gonzalez said, not meeting team standards and expectations. They did not have Jordan Porter. They did not have Sherrod White, Christian Washington, or the aforementioned Weissel. So those guys are back here tonight for UNN. Empty backfield for Kendrick. He slings it to the far sideline for Washington. He has a couple of catches here in the first quarter. A host of Aggies there, including Peterson, Ojo, and Segura. You know, the tough thing to do is to make uh, open field tackles, and that's just what they're looking for here. It's just a quick throw to the outside, get him in space, and see if we can't get someone to miss a tackle. Chris really did a great job of breaking down and, and uh, holding them to just a couple of yards. Looks like UNM will not snap it before the end of the first quarter. And we will take third down and two into quarter two. Timeout, New Mexico State. This is their first time, first time correction at the end of the quarter. An early made field goal for Luke Drizwicki from 44 yards and then a 22-yard touchdown catch for Amante Watkins despite three penalties on the drive. Seven to three, Aggies through one. They're trying to stop the Lobos on a third and short when you come back. Yep, third and short. Got to get those, uh, those biggins up front to dig their heels in. Deep back is Sherrod White. Jones is off the left hip of the quarterback. Hendrick and a flag comes in. Aggies are pointing towards the Lobos direction. Seven offense. Five yard penalty remains for down. That's the UNM trusty left guard. Three year starter Isaac Gutierrez, a senior from Eureka, California. Yeah, that was easy to see. Well, it makes it a little bit more of a um, yeah, yeah, more of a challenge for UNM. But New Mexico State liked it, taking back five. So now it's third and seven. Line to gain is the eleven. Still Sherrod White in the backfield. Four receivers set. No tight ends for UNM. Now they motion Weiss song. Kendrick back to throw. Pressure from Williams. He gets away from Williams, but he is met by Cyrus Dumas, who flies in once again from his cornerback position. You know, we talked about his speed in the open and how quick he can close. He he was he recognized that in a hurry. We did get pressure, so there was pressure from the top side there. It looks like it was Lazarus coming in to put pressure on there, but once Cyrus saw him break containment or break the pocket, he was there. He was on him. Lobos will choose to kick it. 33-yarder for Luke Trizwicki, who hit from 44 earlier. Out of the hold of the punter, Aaron Rodriguez. The kick is away, and it is good. So Trizwicki, who had only attempted three field goals the entire year. His lone make previously was from 37. He's two for two, and he's stepping up big here, Danny, for UNM in this rivalry. 
Yeah, you know, the important thing is you got to get points on the board on these opportunities. So you get down there. It's not what they wanted, but they get three out of it. It's a good stop by the Aggies, right? So digging their heels in there, really playing solid defense. Um, it, it's, a, it's a struggle. This is a chess match. So now we get the new offensive coordinator. We get to see what he has on his third down plays. I look for him to be a little bit more open as the, as the evening goes on in some of these third down situations. Um, so this, this is going to be a good game all night long. Danny, the Saggy defense led by very young defensive coordinator Nate Dreiling, who's only 31. He's the second youngest D.C. at the FBS level. They're bending right now, but they're not breaking. They are. And, and the 4-2-5 that Coach Dreiling uses um, is, is akin to the 3-3-5. And the whole idea is that you're able to move people around, disguise the coverage, don't get caught in one, and allow yourself uh, opportunities to stop the run, bend but don't break. So, so far, so good. George Steinkamp will handle the kickoff here for UNM. He's one of two kickers the Lobos will use. Lawrence Dixon back deep. And so is Jonathan Brady. And it's kicked in his direction. Brady will take a knee, and the Aggies will have it at the 25-yard line. Things always get extra chippy during kickoffs. That's no secret whether it's a rivalry or not. Lobos 2-4. and four. Aggies are 1-5. and five. The Aggies coming off a bye week, so they should be fresh. Jerry Kill felt like the Aggies were moving six times better, he said, the previous week because... They finally got a rest, and they've been playing, Danny, since week zero, so they really needed that bye week. Right. It's a halfway point of the season, too. It's a good time to just reflect on what do we have, what do we got to clean up, what do we need to change. Gavin Franks making his fourth start during his freshman year. Flack comes in. He's had to run a lot. Heavy pressure from this Rocky Long 3-3-5 Lobo defense, and we'll see what the flag is about here on first down. I think they saw a hold on an Aggie on there. Let's see what Kevin or Kevin is looking for. It looks like an RPO. Mm -hmm. Nothing on the on the run. Nothing to throw the ball, so he had to eat it. Officials still discussing, trying to figure it out for the referee, Mike Catone. Zaggy O-line's been up and down all year, trying to find the right fits. A lot of new pieces in this O-line. Illegal block below the ways. Number 51 offense. That penalty would be enforced half the distance to the goal. Mm. Remains first down. Andrew Mitchell's in the background there, speaking to the line judge and Jerry Kill as well. Not happy with the call. That's A.J. Vipulu who it was called on. The young freshman. He's a true freshman from Riverside, California. Andrew Mitchell, the whole line coach who played in the NFL, did not like the call. It's been a heavily penalized first half of the Aggies. So now they're pinned deep. Frakes will throw a little bit low. It was intended for Jonathan Brady. Well, you're looking for a big play here, Danny, but you also don't want to make a big mistake where you're at right now. And and I think that's what Coach Beck was calling for right there, just an out, just a deeper out. But um, you got pressure on the edge that got in Gavin's face, and he couldn't quite get behind that throw because I think Jonathan could have pulled that down if he gave it just a little more oomph to it. But, yes, we don't want no mistakes here, but you have to start eating into that 22, 23 yards now to get a first down. All the way back at the 12, line to gain is the 25-yard line. Second down and 23. The Lobos rush a handful. Franks threads Did the needle. Oh, Hold in goodness. by Chris Bellamy, his seventh catch this year. First down and more for Chris Bellamy. My goodness, what a catch, what a throw. Man, we'll have to take a look at this. This is uh, He really yeah. threaded this thing right down the middle there. He reached down, pulled that thing in there nicely. Chris is really coming on in this second part of the of the season here. Not much from from the beginning, and all of a sudden he gets on the field, start making cat, big catches, and you make catches like that, you'll stay in the game. They announced first down, but it's third down. Line again is the 35, so it's third and four. Frakes is hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Intended for Bryce Childress, no flag. 
Well, there's one thing with the with Chris's catch that really helps is he gives you a little bit more room to flip the field on your punt. So instead of punting deep in your own territory, you're out to the 30. So at least you have a chance to flip the field and go back and give your defense some field position to work with. Josh Carlson averaging 41 yards per punt. Luke Weissong is deep for UNM. Carlson gets it away. Good kick. Weissong backpedals inside the 25. Does not call for a fair catch. And he is belted immediately. Mitch Giacolo, redshirt sophomore from Venice, Florida, laying the lumber on Weissong. Aggie special teams has been outstanding all year. 45-yard punt, negative three return. We're back to Aggie Memorial after this. Back with you here at Aggie Memorial. It's a big game for a lot of reasons. It is also the Hispanic Heritage Game. Mike Perola did a lot of things for NM State Sports Properties, and we'll talk to him later on. It's 7-6 Aggies, 12-54 left to go here in quarter number two tonight's hispanic heritage game is presented by Coors light brought to you in part by financial services partner new Senda credit union and the las cruces hispanic chamber of commerce well danny during the timeout the referee mike catone who should get paid for double duty here tonight he explained that there was a penalty flag on the play uh, there were two unsportsman likes one on the aggies one on the lobos so they offset but that's big because if you get two unsportsman likes in the game, you're ejected. It was on Keyshawn Elliott of the Aggies and Rico Hanna for UNM. So they offset. Lobos, not great field position again at the 20 yard line. Two field goals so far for the Lobos. And Amate Watkins, 22 yard touchdown catch for the Aggies. Nowhere to go in that run for Christian Washington. It's been a heavy dose of Jones and Washington in the backfield for this UNM offense. Number 16, Donovan King was in on the play on the tackle for the Aggies, a senior from Killeen, Texas. Gain of three, second and seven. Miles Kendrick, the quarterback for UNA. Heavy pressure here. Gets it out quickly for Weissong. Yards after the catch. Boy, can he fly. He's got wheels, and they dumped it out there quickly. We, we bit, came into the backfield, and in doing so, we left him out to get outside. And there's only one person left to try to make the tackle to slow it down. These, these are the one plays that kind of make it hard on the defense. So you do good at hold them, hold them, hold them, and all of a sudden you lose containment. You lose someone coming out of a wheel route out of the backfield and picks up some extra yards. And we don't want to let that guy lose because he can run for sure. Catch and run of 16 for Song. Sophomore from Rio Rancho went to Cleveland High. Kendrick gets it out quickly again. Catch is made by Andrew Erickson. He had a big touchdown catch against the Aggies a year ago and a flag comes in late after a gain of five. Let's see it at the end of the, it's at the very end of the uh, play right here. So he breaks one tackle, we make a tackle there and bring him down and something happened right then, there was a flag, there it is. Still waiting for Mike Catone. Here he is. Ineligible downfield. Number 51 offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. That was the center, C.J. James, sophomore from Springfield, Massachusetts. A transfer from FCS, Abilene Christian. So you see the... the yeah, 51 the, there, yeah. middle of your screen. You see the middle of the, or the line of scrimmage, too, is at the 40, so you can see these six yards downfield. Pistol back Jones, they fake the toss to him, low throw, intended for Wysong. Justin Segura was all over Miles Kendrick, who is getting the ball out quickly, but that one was a little too quick. 
It's a nice play, interesting play. So you go back, and it's almost like a reverse or, or a, uh, a counter option, if you will. So fake one way, you're going to pitch. No, you're going to come back, and you're going to dump it underneath. And it almost like a tunnel screen through there. But I think there were some Aggies there well, and he just had to throw the ball and get rid of it. Second down and long. Second down and 15 for UNF. They made a coaching change at offensive coordinator on Sunday. They've kicked a couple of field goals, but no touchdowns yet. They trail by a point. Brohard chasing Kendrick, and he trips him up. The native of Los Lunas, he knows this rivalry as well as anybody. He gets to Kendrick. Man, Trevor can fly. There, there's no doubt about it. We've seen him in some big games, too, where some big teams, and he has just flown from sidelines to sideline. Here's in the middle of the field, so let's just take a look at him right there. It's a broken, nothing to do with the ball, broken play. He's trying to get outside the pocket, and Trevor spies him and just uses his speed and shuts him down, and it's you all day long with the locks and all flowing. Way to go, Trevor. Third and 17 for the Lobos on their fourth offensive series so far tonight. Early on in quarter two. And Jones only gets a couple. So the Lobos will have to punt. Once again, bend, but do not break, Danny. Coach Riley has done a job. Time now for injury. That's one down. And we have an injury timeout on the field. That's the center, C.J. James, who has called for the penalty moments ago. Not a lot of depth at the center position for UNM. And they've been dealing with a bunch of injuries in the previous week or so. Mainly on defense, though. They're without their middle linebacker, Alec Marenko. They're without their starting four-year starter cornerback, Dante Martin. Ray Leotelli, who's been a really good linebacker for them. He's also out. So they're dealing with injuries, mainly on defense. And... The center, James, goes down here. You know, that's what you, usually happens is you get rolled up on from the back, and it's not necessarily, it could be your own player, but it could be a lot of things, but it's usually you're not even, you don't even know what happens and someone rolls up on your ankle. Now their backup center is Ratson Jang, a senior from Honolulu who also plays some tight end. So he has two different jersey numbers, 55 and 88. So we'll see if it's Jang who comes in or if Isaac Gutierrez slides over from left guard, which is likely the scenario here. You know, trying to check out Coach Ryan Hire and, and what his new offensive philosophy could be. I, I spoke with a player that my son Colin, he played for at La Cueva, uh, coach back there at La Cueva, and said, well, tell me about, tell me about Coach Heath. Tell me about what he's like. Tell me about what you see. And he had nothing but positive things to say. Great record. Kids love to play for him, so I'm sure he's going to do quite well in trying to get his mark set for the UNM offense. Aaron Rodriguez will punt, gets it away to Lawrence Dixon, the red shirt senior. He muffed it. Malachi McLean is down there. It's only McLean and Dixon. There's four Lobos. And there's a big pile. The Lobos had a muffed punt a week ago. The Aggies have been pretty clean, and they're able to pounce on it. Malachi McLean. <laughs> the freshman from Manville, Texas, saves the day. Mal Holy smokes. Man, Malachi says, I got you on this one. It's a good thing he's around there, and that's exactly what Coach Sanchez is telling him. Thank you for being to the ball to make that. We're back after this. The Aggies will have the football. 10-20 left in quarter two. Seven to six Aggies on Hispanic Heritage Night. So much going on earlier tonight during the fan fiesta, which took place about four hours before kickoff. The tailgate lots were full, and the GM of NM State Sports Properties, Mike Barolo, standing by with Tatiana. Mike, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Now, a lot happening tonight, especially before the game. We had the Fan Fiesta. Talk about that and the idea between uh, Heritage Hispanic Day. No, it's really exciting, Tatiana, to be here. We had a great night tonight. This is our third annual Hispanic Heritage Day. It started three years ago, basically because we felt that we wanted to do something really awesome for our community. And uh, we partnered with the Las Cruces Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And without them, this wouldn't have become a reality. And another neat thing that we have going on is the Navajo language radio broadcast at the game. How, is that, how exciting is that for you and Adam State Sport Property? Well, it's pretty, it's just so humbling that uh, they, Mario came to me and said, hey, there's an opportunity for us to do Navajo language radio for the Navajo Nation. 
and Learfield picked up on it, and now we're streaming it across the country on our varsity streaming network. It's just an amazing opportunity. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Back to you guys. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Mike. An outstanding job by you and your team. Run on first down of two yards for Star Thomas. Well, hurry up for the Aggies. Thomas navigates his way past the 25, up near the sticks. He's going to be marked down at the 27. He gets seven. Looks like he's a yard shy of a first down. So he go a little tempo. He's going to go quick. It's the same type of play, same area, same everything, and uh, poured it in there and got some extra yards. It's just hard rowing both sides, you know, not a lot of big plays, but um, it just feels like it's gone so fast, this game. 9.30 left, a lot of penalties in this first half. The Aggies lead by one. This is third and one. They motion Cordell David. They run left with Star Thomas, and he's going to lose a couple of yards on this one. And this is not the territory where you could go for it, so Josh Carlson will have to come out to punt. Yeah, that's too bad right there because that, that, would have, that first down would have put us in a position to keep driving here. Instead, you have to punt the ball away. It was pressure from the backside, so the backside backer, you can see it as we move to the left on the run. You can just see the pressure coming straight down the line of scrimmage, and there's just nowhere he can go. Thomas, a tough guy to bring down. He weighs in 225 listed, probably closer to 235, though. Wysong back deep to third punt from Josh Carlson, who's been good again. He's had an outstanding career. Wysong thought about calling for a fair catch. Looked like he might have, and he did. He raised his arm. That was enough. So he raised his arm. He caught it, and then he started running towards it. Nick Jacalone was sniffing it once again. He made a big hit earlier, and it's a boot of 44 from Carlson. There's Jacalone, number 24 in crimson. He just wants to play football. He's an old-school football guy, Danny. Yeah, I like Nick. He's fired up. Look how fired up he is. It's the Rio Grande rivalry. The Aggies looking for their first win against the Lobos since 2017. For 21, and the Aggies fell 42-25. Guess what? We have a flag again. My goodness. Staff infraction, 67 offense, five yard penalty, to make first down. Well, this will be interesting to follow, Danny, because that's on Isaac Gutierrez, and like we thought, he slides over from left guard to center with the injury to CJ James. So we'll see how the Lumbos navigate this with their center out, and Gutierrez now snapping the football. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough position to replace. So it's a five-yard penalty for Miles Kendrick in this Lobo offense. Pass is almost intercepted. J.J. Durbel breaks it up to back up free safety from Naples, Florida. You know, in talking with, um, with the Aggie secondary and defensive back coaches, the one thing they said is we use a lot of guys, and so they do go deep. So here you get back up to the free safety and you have a lot of people on the field and their whole philosophy is that by playing a lot of people that you're always trying to up your game so the guy behind you doesn't take your position permanently and it creates this competition but it makes them better it's i like the philosophy the previous pass was intended for luke wise song this pass is caught that's why song he's been busy his 17th catch this year. Young man, once again, from Rio Rancho. And that's Andre Selden. So we get more defensive backs in the game here. So great job. Lobos, one for four on third down in the game. They are 24% for the year, but just 14% in their previous five games. They went 9 for 12 on a third down and their shutout win in their opener against Maine. It's been all downhill since on third down. Kendrick incompletes. Once again intended for Song, Miami, Ohio transfer. Mekhi Miller in coverage. And we got an, an Aggie that's down there. We brought pressure, so lots of pressure. Got a delayed blitz as well. It's just an all-out blitz up front there. A dragging route underneath, and uh, there was just a lot, a lot to, to be had there. 
So now the Lobos are one for five on third down as their third down struggles continue. That is Lazaric Bailey, sophomore defensive end from Aubrey, Texas. Foul, roughing the passer. Number 10, the defense. 15 off penalty. Automatic first down. That's incredible. So roughing the passer called on Lazarus Williams, and that will continue this drive for UNM. 15 yards, automatic first down. Mm -mm -mm. That's Coach Dryling right there that he walks past. I'm sure they, they had a couple words, but he's, his motor, Lazarus' motor's been full speed, and so uh, he's going to speak with Coach Kill right there, but there it is right there. I don't. The hard part there, Danny, if you're rushing, the quarterback is trying to stop your movement yep. going towards him. Yeah. Either way, you need to find a way, and the Aggies have been penalized a bunch here in the first half. Eight penalties, 86 yards, and that will not make that man happy, Jerry Kill. Well, as Eric Bailey is able to get up and get off the field with the help of the training staff, so that is a good sign that he's able to get up, but he is limping off. So the ball now for the Lobos at the 46 instead of punting. It's first down and 10. Holiday, the quarterback, he hands it off to his running back. That is Hullaby, transfer from Texas. Jaden Hullaby from Dallas. Gains four. Holiday will stay in. Sophomore from Lemoore, California. He pulls it. He was really good running the football a week ago. And Chris Ojo not fooled. The transfer from Eastern Washington on the stop. I think he was gonna. They were gonna go tempo, and he was gonna try to get outside and that keeper and get around the end. He had some success last week with that. But when you have Chris Ojo on your on your trail, there's not much you can do. Chris goes flat down the line of scrimmage. Is what you should do. Don't chase him into the backfield. And he's able to make a great tackle right there. Lobos continue to rotate quarterbacks. It's the Kansas transfer Kendrick back in. Line to gain is the Aggie 44. On a third and five, it is intercepted. Donovan King rumbling near sideline. His first career pick. Adam, there was a couple things before the game. You said, hey, we need to get Amonte in there. We've got to figure out a way. I wonder if he can get in there somehow. He scores. The other thing you said is we need more interceptions. I agree. We need more interceptions. We have one. Now we have two. That's Donovan King in coverage right there. Ball came to him, and what a way to turn the, turn the tide a bit there. you got to make the play. Even though the ball's coming to you, maybe misthrown, you still got to make the catch. There's Coach Dryling right there all over him saying, oh, yeah. First forced turnover since the game against Wisconsin early on this year for the Aggies. That was when Cyrus Dumas had a pick. Jet sweep for Amante Watkins. Good block by Tomas Whitford upfield. It's been a struggle, Danny, trying to force turnovers. It's not been a struggle, though, for UNF. They've forced a bunch this year. In fact, their defense has 13 forced turnovers in the same amount of games. Yeah, they've, they've done quite well in that in that blitzing, storming defense that they have, that hawk, ball hawking defense. Um, and the Aggies are going to, I mean, the Aggies are going to get there. The same type of defense, they just got to get into the rhythm. But maybe this will be start right there with Donovan King's interception. Previous run went for three for Watkins, second down and seven. The Aggies are in Lobo territory. Franks pulls it, he throws, and it's incomplete. Flat comes in. Cordell David, the intended target. You know, when I talked to Coach Sanchez, I said, so tell me who, who are your guys? Who are you guys you really think can break one wide open? And and he was all about Cardell David. He said, man, the guy can fly. We're going to get him with some confidence, make some plays. He catches the ball. He's done. He's gone. There was a lot of talk in the spring about NFL potential for Cordell David in his first year in the program. He's out of Winnie, Texas. Transfer from Trinity Valley. What's your number? Ineligible downfield, number 51 of the offense. Pass interference, wow. 11 of the defense. Those fouls offset. Replay second down. 
So we've had an ineligible lineman downfield twice. One for the Aggies, one for the Lobos. This is on A.J. Vipulu, freshman from Riverside, California. He's been penalized a couple of times in the first half. So the ball is right back to the 47. Second down and seven under six left in half one. Lobos got the ball first tonight. So the Aggies will get the ball to start half two. But you want to capitalize here. Rolling right as Frakes throws it near side. Received by Cordell David, who was the intended target on the previous play. His team has 10th catch this year. Nice play right there. So up on the line of scrimmage, UNM bringing the blitz, bringing some stunts, lots of pressure. So he's going to roll out. We have a tight end that stays in, tries to get an extra block in there. Actually running back, get the ball to Cordell, let him get the first down, see if he can't get some extra yardage breaking those. The speed of him and Justice is really what we want to see in the open field. He needed seven. He got eight, a first down for the Aggies. First and ten. Here's Jumani Jones, who shimmies up to the 34-and-a-half-yard line. He gets four yards on the carry. It is really hard, Danny, to run the football against a rocky long 3-3-5 three, three, it, defense. It's tough. They, they pack that inside in there. They got three down, but you're three behind, and the five comes stepping up in there. So you end up with a six-man, seven-man front in the box there, and it makes it hard to, to get those extra yardage. Pistol back is Jones. Tight end to the right is Eric Marsh. Handoff goes to Jones. Good run by Jamani Jones, and he has the first down. He's down to the 27. He gets seven. It's a cat and mouse thing. So this time they stay in, the, in, this, uh, in their standard base defense and don't bring any blitz in there. They're staying back a bit, looking for something on the edge. And this time it's a gift to straight up the middle there, so that's why he was able to get some extra yardage in there. So now Jerry Kill and offensive coordinator Tim Beck will stick with Jamani Jones in the backfield. Transfer from Northeastern Oklahoma A&M Juco. Had 11 rushing touchdowns a year ago. That is Eric Marsh who was in motion. Botch play here. Frakes look left and Jamani Jones wasn't there. We saw that a couple times two weeks ago as well. He only gets one. You know, what I was thinking, it may have been, this one may have been botched, but I think on the last couple plays that he's handed the ball off, he's kept it like in a fake around the outside, and it, and it felt like no one was there watching him, um, although that play didn't come off so good. But maybe that was a keeper for him to try to get some extra yardage in there. Aggies yeah, okay to use clock here. Clock moving, three and a half left, half one, low scoring game. Danny Gonzalez, the head coach in his third year at UNM, looks on. One more safety for the Lobos, late 90s. There's Jumani Jones again on the carry. So third down and eight yards coming up. Aggies trying to drive and score and extend their advantage here. Well, there's a hard rowing one, two yards, not much there. Big play here, Adam. Do you go for it? Do you pull something out, get one of your trick plays to try to keep the, the drive alive, or do you just play it safe? Ball's on the 25-yard line. Two running backs, Jones and Thomas. Frakes will toss it to star Thomas. Needs to make a man miss, and a good ankle tackle is made. A loss of a yard on the play. It was A.J. Halsey coming up from his Lobo Wolf position. So the Aggies will have to attempt a field goal. The kicking game has been an adventure a little bit this year. The Aggies have rotated three kickers. Ethan Alberts in early. Lately, it's been Brett Money and Carson Zilmer. This will be a 43-yard attempt for Brett Money, who's one for one in his career. Made a 26-yarder two games ago against Hawaii. The kick for Money. And it's no good. Well, we knew that the kicking game for both was going to be pivotal. And right now, the Lobos are winning in the kicking game. Trace Wickey's hit a couple, and the Aggies are 0 for 1. So you waste an opportunity to get points on the board. And two games ago, Danny, if you recall, Carson Zilmer took the deep field goal. He attempted a 47-yarder. Jerry Kill said back then 
Zilmer will attempt the deeper ones. Brent Money is more accurate from the shorter distance, and uh, Money cannot knock it through from 43. Yeah, that's too bad because that would have been off the interception. That would have been a great time to pick up some points. So now you have a minute 56 with uh, the Lobos that have the ball. And off goes to true freshman Christian Washington. And he's hit by Andre Selden, the nickelback transfer from Michigan. Gain of five for Washington. Reminder, the Aggies will get the football to start half two. They're trying to get a late stop in half one. There's a cast on the hand of Selden. He broke his thumb recently, but he's playing through it with the cast. Washington again breaks the tackle before he's met by Bryce Jackson, the transfer from UNLV, who knows the Lobos well from his Mountain West days. Right. A gain of four, third and one. Nowhere to go wow. for Washington. Wow. It's going to depend on the spot. I think so, too. I, I think it was bring them all. I... And it looks like they're going to spot it a yard shy. So no gain. And it appears, unless they take a look, ooh, the spot when they played the football was a little bit better, but I think it's fourth and inches. It is just shy of that 36-yard line. So fourth and inches, we'll see if the Lobos go for it. Oh, you can see the defense right there, every gap filled. We have backers filling inside there. And, and UNM's keeping their offense on the field. 20, well, they're going to let it. They're going to let the clock run, run here. Down, yeah. So the clock's moving, and the play clock will expire. Or are they going to take a timeout? They're going to take a timeout. Timeout, University of New Mexico. This is their second timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. So the Lobos will take a timeout. I would assume probably... They'll punt here, but we'll see. I mean, there's 13 seconds left, so. You know what's incredible as it as the clock coming operator, off. Please put 18 seconds on the clock. One eight, one eight. As they're coming off the field, you can see the players jawing at each other. So it's it's been a battle, seven to six. Lots of penalties. Really a sloppy game. But you know, for the first part, I'll say, okay, fine. You get your nerves. You got jumped a little bit. Okay, fine. But after that, it's kind of got a little sloppy. But seven to six, it's a battle. I think it might be the way the two head coaches want it. Yeah. Danny Gonzalez is okay with that. Jerry Kill wants to mud the game up a little bit and have a chance to win it in the fourth. Aaron Rodriguez will punt for UNF. You need to be careful here. Rodriguez gets it away. Lawrence Dixon backpedals around the 20. Will get a return. And the Aggies will have eight seconds left. And I don't think they're going to do anything with it, Danny. Yeah, I don't think so. I think this isn't the time. I think this is you get back in there and you clean up on, on the penalties, first of all, and figure out what do we need to do. A couple of made field goals for Luke Drizwicki. 44-yarder in the first quarter. 33-yarder in the second quarter. Low touchdown in the first half. A 22-yard touchdown catch by Amate Watkins. And the Aggies will take a knee. They will get the ball to start half two. So we head to halftime. Just an old-fashioned, defensive, grinded-out Rio Grande rivalry matchup. The first game for Jerry Kill against the Lobos. And he likes these kind of football games. These are the games he won at Minnesota, Northern Illinois, Southern Illinois. The old ball coach is just fine with this one. Seven is six in front of a packed house. Halftime activities coming your way next. Lobos are looking to make it four straight wins against the Aggies as we start half number two. Picked up by Jonathan Brady, the freshman out of Vegas. Down the far sideline, breaks the tackle, and it's a big return for the speedster out of Vegas. You, we know he can move, and he, he took that ball and and fantastic, you know, they let it bounce around a little bit, and I'm thinking, just pick up the ball. Someone just grabbed the ball. He did, and went forward, then broke to the right. So here it is here. It's bouncing around. It's like, okay, get it. You go up, and then you break out because everyone comes down, and so that's just one slow 
someone that slowed him down. Otherwise, Jonathan Brady would have taken that to the house. That's a nice job right there to start the Aggies in great field position. Gavin Frank, 6 for 10. No mistakes in half one. 86 yards passing, one touchdown, no picks. Team high, 40 rushing yards, 37 on one carry for Star Thomas. Freshman tight end Trevor Stevens was in motion. They run it with Jamani Jones, who was held in check in the first half. In the first half, only three carries for 12 yards. He picks up four on this first down run. Yeah, third quarter is the one where you have to say, okay, well, what kind of adjustments do we make? You know, offensively on both sides, there wasn't a lot of working. Everything in the middle has been congested. Um, so you're trying to come back out and say, let's let's run a couple of plays that we know we can run, and let's see defensively if they made any big swinging changes, because if so, then we want to exploit those. I re don't really see a lot so far. It's like almost no one wants to make that first move. Mm -hmm. Rico Hanna paced the Lobos in the first half with four tackles defensively. It was a collection of guys for UNM in the first half defensively. Once again, they're missing some guys right now Due to injury, Alec Marenko is out, middle linebacker. Linebacker Ray Leotelli's out. Dante Martin, four-year starter at cornerback, he's out. Third down and six coming up for the Aggies against this tough Lobo defense that only gives up 23 points per game. Danny Gonzalez, their third-year head coach, a defensive-minded head coach. The Aggies really struggling on third down in the game. Now it's Jones to the left of Frakes. Here comes pressure from Cody Moon. A high throw intended for Bryce Childress is incomplete. So the Aggies waste the good return to start the half by Jonathan Brady. And this offense, which sputtered two weeks ago against FIU, continues to sputter. Yeah, so we leave Jamani Jones in to pick up the blitzing uh, uh, in on the side there from UNM. And Frakes just couldn't get set. He couldn't really look like he was had his feet set, and he let it go, and it just sailed a little bit and couldn't get to get down to make the catch. And now the wind is a factor a little bit. It's a little breezy now. Josh Carlson will have the wind behind him as he boots it away, barely gets it off. Luke Weissong kind of leaps a little bit as he makes the fair catch at the 11-yard line. Aggie defense got the interception from Donovan King in that first half, his first career pick. That was a 40-yard punt by Carlson. Poor field position again for UNF. So one of those keys, Danny, for Jerry Kill was win the turnover battle. And right now the Aggies are. They haven't committed any, and they have forced one. Miles Kendrick, the quarterback, senior from Morgan Hill, California. Running back straight up the gut is Nate Jones. Nowhere to go. Uh, late flag. There's some pulling and some tugging. There was extracurriculars from the get-go in this game tonight. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, 87 offense. That penalty would be enforced half the distance to the goal. Main second down. That's on the tight end, Jill Maez. Yeah, and when it comes down to the wire here, this has never rated two's first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. Would the clock operator please put 1251 on the clock? 1251 on the clock. Now they're going to add 21 seconds to the clock. So the Lobos all the way back to the seven yard line. All right now, this game is searching for a rhythm offensively for either side. There has not been a rhythm offensively. Penalties have been a big reason why. Nate Jones is stuffed. Trevor Brillhard. You know, the linebacker's coach always say, you got to go downhill, got to tackle downhill, got to go downhill. Well, in this case, Trevor went downhill. He was there, and he is fast to begin with. There he is in the middle of your screen, not blocked. That's first thing right there. It's like, I would block him. If you don't, that's exactly what's going to happen. He's going to be a wrecking ball right up the middle. Nicely done, Trevor. Danny, that is textbook yeah. from Trevor Brohan. Yeah.
Safe play there. Nate Jones runs again. Brohart again on the tackle. Lobos were just looking for some separation right now for their punter, Aaron Rodriguez. Nice three and out. You, know, you, you get the ball first and you can't get there. There's Coach Dryland saying, yeah, that's a nice job right there. Here it is, the last play right here. Trevor pulling off, getting off his block, gain separation and make that tackle. Goes without saying right here, Aaron Rodriguez has to be careful. In his zone end zone, punting into the wind. This wind is really going to be a factor in half number two. Lawrence Dixon on the return, and the Aggies will have their best field position all day. And now they have to take advantage. Uh, Lawrence Dixon, what an amazing, what an amazing catch. Yeah, that's a tough catch. You know, in the wind, you're running full blast. As you're running full blast towards the ball, there are guys coming down that are just looking to light you up. And you have to keep your eye on it and make a good catch and then do something with it. That is just, that's tough right there. And he's got a tough job and did a great job. That's a nine-yard return after a pretty good 33-yard yeah. punt for Rodriguez into a stiff wind. And that's those are good nine yards. So the ball's at the 31 of UNF. Pistol back is Star Thomas. They fake it to him. They throw it downfield, and it's hauled in. Cordell David, his second touchdown as an Aggie. What a dime. What a pass by Gavin. You know, Coach Sanchez says, Cordell's a guy, Cordell's a guy. And I said, hey, what about this? What about that? And he's like, hey, you know what? Cordell can do it. I'm telling you right now, he can do it. Hey, Coach Sanchez, Cordell did it right there. Look at Gavin sitting back in the pocket. Nice composure. Good blocking up front by the line. He throws a perfect pass downfield there. Cordell brings that in and lights it up. And Coach Sanchez is right. He can do it. Cordell David, the sophomore from Winnie, Texas. He had seven touchdown catches a season ago at Trinity Valley Community College. Jerry Kill and Tony Sanchez said during the spring, they said this young man has NFL potential. He hauls in his second touchdown catch of the year. Gavin Franks, the true freshman from Norman, throws his second tonight. Aggies extend their lead here at home. 31-yard touchdown catch for Cordell David. That's going to make his position coach, Tony Sanchez, the former Aggie wide receiver, quite happy. We talked to Coach Sanchez on Tuesday, and he talked about Cordell David and his wide receivers stepping up. Well, I mean, obviously you get seniors like Powers who need to step up. You know, Terrell Warner needs to step up. You know, guys like Cordell David, you know, he hasn't had a ton of opportunities and he's a special talent. You know, him and Jonathan Brady, those guys need to make big plays in a game like this. So, you know, the, you know, being a receiver is a little different. You never know when the opportunity is going to come, especially in an offense like ours. So when they do come, you have to take advantage of them. And we got to make those guys, you know, we got to make them defend the entire football field. We can't let them be ragey and load the box. We need to threaten them on the outsides. And if we do that, we have a great chance. Well, Danny, it's hard not to notice the uh, the gash on Tony Sanchez's <laughs> nose. That happened minutes before the interview, and he said it's rivalry week. We're going to do this. Apparently, a helmet got him. I don't know. And I, I think he was ready to, to strap on the shoulder pads as well. Yeah, he stopped by. There was a little get-together. He stopped by with some of the former players last night, and, and every player stopped by and said, hey, coach, just make sure you tell him how important this is. And he's like, I did, I did. Christian Washington on the return. Up near the 20, they'll mark him at the 17-yard line. So now the Aggies look for momentum. After the touchdown by David, the defense has played one heck of a ball game. And we talked about this early on, Danny. Statistically, yeah, the Aggie defense has given up 32 points per game, but it's a big improvement from previous years. This is the best defense statistically since the bull year of 2017. Yeah, they're doing quite well. And, it, and it's important that you have a good third quarter here that you don't fall apart because now UNM is going to loosen it up a little bit, right? They're going to try a few more things. They're not just going to continue to go up the middle. They're going to take some shots downfield. Miles Kendrick was 6 for 10, passing in half one. Andrew Erickson, his second catch. He's upended by Cyrus Dumas. Tackle number six for him. Man, I'm just so impressed with Cyrus and how fast he can close. And part of that is being able to recognize what, what's out there. And when you recognize it 
and it's a key, then you can turn it on, and he does. Gain of only three on the pass and catch to Erickson. They go jet sweep again. Wysong breaks the tackle of Dumas, and he adds a couple extra yards. Chris Ojo able to finish him off, but good elusiveness shown by Wysong to pick up three to bring up third down and short. Yeah, that could have been a, a, a tackle for a loss, but instead they got some extra yardage out of it. So you're going to do just a little reverse, a little pitch up front there and try to get some extra yards, get the defense moving one way and have everyone go the other, but nothing there. Lobos, one for seven on a third down tonight. The third down struggles offensively have continued. Lots of time to throw for Kendrick, and it's batted down by the Aggie front line. Chris Ojo will pick it up just in case. It was a forward pass intended for Washington, but it was batted down at the line. I'm not sure who got a hand on it. it Do you see, like, Danny? It looks like Lazarus was, had his hand in there because he's got a big, long frame in there. So let's take a look. Yeah. And it is him right there, number 10, at the, at the, in the middle of the screen. Mm -hmm. And it looks like he just got the tail end of that. Just enough, right? 6'5", 270, that's what it's going to yeah. do for you. He almost had a deflection earlier, gets one there. Lobo's now one for eight on third down. Kicking into the win, Rodriguez. Dixon handles Dixon into Lobo territory before he's dragged down. And the Aggies will start inside Lobo territory once again. Coming off a 31-yard touchdown pass, Frakes to David. So we'll step aside. The Aggies will have good field position once again. They lead by eight. They're trying to extend their advantage here at home in the Rio Grande rivalry. Aggies looking for more consistency right now offensively. They were also looking for the deep passing game to come into play. So far, so good in half two. And for more on wide receivers, Coach Tony Sanchez, we send it down to Tatiana. Hey, Adam. Well, Sanchez has a unique background. He was actually a wide receiver for the Aggies in the mid-90s, and he started his coaching career as a student assistant at New Mexico State back in 1996. So his first full-time coaching gig came locally as a wide receiver coach at Oregon Mountain High School, formerly known as Oñate. His coaching career blossomed, and eventually he worked his way up to UNLV, where he spent five years as the head coach. Now Sanchez is back at the place he loves. He understands the rivalries as much as anyone. In fact, before the Aggies played Utah in September, Sanchez gave a spirited speech mm -hmm. to the team, talking about how much the rivalries mean to the fans and the community. Back to you guys. Thank you, Tatiana. Sweet play here for Amante Watkins. That record, Danny, at Bishop Gorman, 85-5 yeah. and five as the head coach. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. He's done a great job, which, which allows him to go back and recruit that. Got a little mm -hmm. tempo now. They fake it to Watkins. Gavin Frakes rolling right. Fires it downfield. He has Jonathan Brady, but he's out of bounds. Hopefully Brady's okay as he hit the sidewall. That is off the turf. Dominic Moreno, the athletic trainer, the head, will head over and make sure Brady's okay on the Lobo sideline. Gavin trying to keep it alive here and scrambling and in the corner of the end zone. Just mm. too much. Oh, yeah, that's tough. There's not a whole lot of room over there to use if you're running full speed towards the side of the end zone. So Jonathan Brady never really had any time to slow up. Heck of a throw by Gavin Frakes. So Brady's slow to get up, but it looks like he is okay. That's good to see. We'll step aside. We're back after this. I've got that blue sky. I've got that sunshine. The drive to better myself has been there since since I started playing sports. 
being competitive is me. That's within me. And when you're at the gym six days a week, obviously you're gonna have setbacks. The ultrasound showed it was a hernia. The team at Memorial always assured me that I was gonna receive the highest level of care. Before I knew it, I was back on my two feet. Thanks to the team at Memorial, I had no complications and a fast recovery. That's the Memorial difference. Are you ready to buy your next vehicle? And you send the credit union? We've got a loan that will fit your needs. Plus, we offer no payments for 90 days, and you can apply for your loan and sign your papers anywhere. Like, anywhere! Simply visit nusenda.org. Or visit our new branch at 1715 East University Avenue to apply in minutes. Nusenda Credit Union. That's the power of we in action. An outstanding crowd tonight. The best so far this year, it looks like. The Nevada game was good. This one really, really good. Larry Rose the third is in the stands wearing his Permian 45 jersey. And the Aggies lead 14-6. Beasley, Mitchell, and company certified public accountants are proud supporters of the Aggies. Bookkeeping, auditing, tax, and estate planning, and more. Let the experts at Beasley, Mitchell, and company tackle your taxes. And KT Holmes, the people's builder, serving Las Cruces for over 30 years, is proud to sponsor Aggie Athletics and proud to announce our newest subdivision, the Melodies. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or looking to move, the Melodies features high-efficiency, high-quality built homes ready for you to move into. Visit ktholmes.com or come see us off Highway 70 and Holman Road. Third down and seven for the Aggie offense. Inside Lobo territory. Gavin Franks will swing it out. Bobbled and then caught by Monte Watkins, and he cannot turn it up field, but a late flag, and it might have been a late hit. And Danny Gonzalez furious with Justin Harris, the redshirt senior. Yeah, I think, Adam, when you get to this point where you nerves, yeah, in the beginning, but now it can affect the outcome of the game. After the play, personal foul, late hit, 97 of the defense. 15-yard field added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Danny, the Lobos had a number of plays like this a couple weeks ago that really cost them down the stretch against UNLV, and Danny Gonzalez is trying to correct that, so he does not like to see that from anybody, but especially yep. a redshirt senior like Justin Harris, who's one of the leaders on the D-line. Right, well, and then he was two steps out of bounds. It's like he's out. He's not, there's nothing to do there. Ball is at the 29-yard line. Pistol back is Watkins. Trying to bounce it to the edge. He has really, really good speed. He breaks the tackle before he's pushed out of bounds. He broke the tackle of Jarek Reed, who's tough to get away from. Yeah, I, I like when Amante gets out there and starts using a little, a little physicality, if you will, and trying to get a stiff arm, trying to get the edge, because that's what we want from him. Get an edge, get a loop, get a, get a seam something, because he's a sprinter, and he will go. And so that's what he's trying to do, get to that edge right there. Almost got there. Scamper of eight yards for Watkins, a transfer from TCU, a former high school four-star out of Houston, Klein Forest High School. Second down and two, right back to Watkins, uses the stiff arm, and he has nowhere to go. No gain on the play for Amante Watkins. In fact, it's going to be a loss of two and bring up third down and four. That's a tough one because you would have think that he would have got that corner and picked up those extra yards right there, but both defenses are just are just ball hawking. They are just storming to the ball. So let's see what happens there. We're going to give him the ball, try to get the edge, and just pick up two yards, but they're just closing way too fast. Wind is behind you. Right now the ball is at the 23. The Aggies need the 19. They don't want to kick a field goal, though. They want a first down here. Watkins fakes, or I should say Frakes fakes the throw. Watkins on the carry, and he gets the first down. Nice. Come back with the inside little zone play in there, and Amante just pours it in there. Part of that is the offensive line. So the offensive, also offensive line, Coach Mitchell made some adjustments at halftime. 
Get him out there, get in front, down, good downfield blocks. Get him to the second level and pick up that first down. Aggies now one for seven on third down, so they finally convert. Ball is at the 17, a half dozen in the previous run for Lamonte Watkins. Star Thomas now the pistol back. Bunched formation to the left, including tight end Trevor Stevens. Thomas pushes forward up to the 16. He only gets one yard. Like to see the various uh, running backs that we can get in there and, and get some extra yards. We have different styles of runners. Jamani Jones, big, big guy, 6'2", 225. You got Star Thomas, 6'2", 225. You got Amani at 5'11", 190. And we have some other running backs as well. A whole different style of running back. And even those guys out of the backfield, very potent. Empty backfield here, Danny. Five out wide on second down and nine for Gavin Franks, the true freshman from Oklahoma. He's being chased. He gets away. He fakes the pass. Gavin Franks will run inside the five-yard line. So here's what happens. You come with an empty backfield. Everyone is out running patterns. You have a rush. You have a quarterback that can get out of the pocket. And once the pocket breaks, everyone is in coverage. There is no one left. As you can see, the middle of the field, there's no one left to account for the quarterback. You get around the outside of the, of the man right there, and then you just take it for as many yards as you can. That's a nice, nice keep right there by Gavin. Gain of 13 yards for Gavin Frakes. And now Frakes is under center. An eye formation look. The fullback is Marsh. The deep back is Star Thomas. Right up the middle. Lowers his shoulders and maybe gets a yard down to the two. Those yep. are those are rough, rough row and row yards right there, right? You got everyone in there. You got a goal line defense. Not much room for anything in there. But you get a couple. So let's see what happens here. Whether you stick with that or whether you come out and fake that and keep it around the outside somehow. Well, in this eye formation look, always look out for the tight end. And the Aggies have Tomas Whitford at tight end. They also have Trevor Stevens in. And eye formation look once again. Full back is Marsh. Deep back is Star Thomas once again. They run it right for Thomas. Angles up into the end zone. Star Thomas, his third rushing touchdown this year. You come back with the big power eye formation that we saw introduced here a few games back and, and just pour it in there. In this case, Star Thomas saw that the inside was stacked, nowhere to go, and he had a, enough wherewithal to say, well, I'll just take three steps to the outside, bounce it there, and take it to the house. Nice job by Star Thomas. Thomas with a rushing touchdown in each of his previous three games now. And it's a two-score game. The defense has been outstanding. The offense good as well so far in half two. Here it is, the power eye. You can see all of the clutter in the middle, just too much in there. So he did the next thing. It's like, well, I'll just bounce it to the outside. And you're trying to pour it right there, right off tackle, but nothing. You couldn't have got a yard that way. But bouncing it outside, he can walk it into the end zone. Ten plays, 47 yards, methodical, if you will. Four minutes and 45 seconds during that scoring drive for the Aggies. It's turned into a windy night. Brett Money trying to make sure that football sticks on the tee. And the Aggies have now outscored the Lobos in this half, 14-0, Danny. Uh, that's fantastic. They've just, and part of that is being able to have good field position, Adam. So you start on one side of the field and you've stayed there and you've managed to pull two scores or get some scoring out of that. And it's all field position. And this is returnable again for Christian Washington. Trying to make something happen. And he's tripped up. That could have been really dangerous. He had a 100-yard kick return touchdown earlier this year against Boise State. And, of course, there is some laundry on the field. <laughs> a pair of flags back near the five-yard line. Wave the Wonder Dog retrieves the tee on a windy night. And our referee, Mike Catone, will give us the call. Block in the back. Number two of the receiving team. That penalty will be enforced. Half the distance to the goal. 
first down. So it's on the Lobos, and you can tell by the microphone from Micah Tone how windy it is. Christian Washington probably should have taken a knee, Danny, but you're trying to make something happen here, and he's yeah. done it before. Well, he almost he almost broke that too, right? And yeah. you could see the push. It was in the middle of the, of the shot there, the camera shot, and it was just a slight push, but the, you're standing right by the official, and he'll see that every time. Now frustrated Danny Gonzalez, an Albuquerque native, year three at his alma mater. Hired in December 2019, so his first season was the pandemic year. Lobos haven't had a winning season since 2016. They're looking for room here. Nate Jones is upended by true freshman Malachi McLean. Malachi came screaming from that safety position. He just spied that thing and he just came screaming in there. That, that was amazing. That was a great job right there. Cut the feet out. You'll see Malachi come screaming in from the bottom of the screen. There it is right there. Knock the feet out, pull him down. Great job. Gain of three for Jones. Out of Bellflower, California, former UCLA commit. Was a high school four star. Miles Kendrick, the quarterback. Lobos pin deep. They fake the jet sweep to Y Song. Getting away from pressure is Kendrick, and he is taken down. Then the ball pops loose. He was tackled by Donovan King. I think he was down anyway before the ball popped loose. Well, those are the ones that the plays that can be troubling, right? So you get a, a scrambling quarterback. He's looking downfield. If you're a defense back, you have to stay with your guy. Don't give up no matter what. So let's see what happens here. It's looking for a quick shot. Nothing there. Scrambling. No one's left on the quarterback. Get as many positive yards as possible. And he needed seven. He got seven. So it's a first down for Miles Kendrick in this offense for the Lobos. They've kicked two field goals. They have not scored a touchdown. They've struggled again on third down. Kendrick, play action. Throws it across the middle. Catch is made. That's his tight end, Connor Whithoff, to a year ago had a touchdown catch against the Aggies. Little play action. So in this just quick hitch right down the middle there. We're in zone coverage, and he just finds that little open space and sits down in there. I think they're going to start, we'll start seeing more and more of that since that middle becomes so congested. You'll run it, but you'll start to fake it, pull it, and start looking at some other patterns where you can flood it, maybe take a couple shots downfield. Whithoft gets a dozen for a first down, only his second catch this year. That touchdown catch against the Aggies a year ago was his first career catch. Kendrick runs it straight up the middle, dives forward. Chris Ojo and seldom used senior linebacker James Blowers, a local product from Las Cruces, combining for the tackle. I like Chris is spying him. Chris is spying him, and he has good presence where he keeps his, his body all together. He's not trying to lunge too much. He's trying to come up close as fast as possible, break down, and make a tackle. That was just a great job right there by Chris. You can kind of see it right there. That was Blowers, number 46 in crimson. Washington breaks the tackle before being taken down by Bryce Jackson. Clock continues to move. Just over two minutes left. Clock will stop for now to move the chains. Another first down for UNM before it starts to move again. We're just going to start pouring it up the middle there and, and look for opportunities. And so there's a nice little seam that he gets into. Aggie's able to make a tackle, but not before he gets some good positive yards. Right back to Washington, up to the 40. The issue for the Lobos this year offensively hasn't necessarily been in the running game. It's been in the passing game. This is a run first team right now, and they've struggled mightily in the passing game. They only average 117 passing yards per game. They're 128 out of 131 in FBS in total offense. And right now, Washington is just pinballing off defenders. He is. A, it looks like looks like the Aggies had him pinned, too, and it looks like he just kind of just snuck through there, kind of skinned his way and just able to get bounce out and pick up uh, some positive yards. Four-yard pickup for Washington, 5'10", 200 pounds, a true freshman from San Diego. Came in with only 19 carries for 98 yards. Does not have a touchdown yet this year. 
Here's Nate Jones. So right now the Lobos are rotating Jones in Washington. We haven't seen Sherrod White much. And he had 31 carries coming in, 12 more than Washington entering action. So they're getting some positive yardage, and they're just thinking, okay, we're just going to continue to do this. We're going to get in there. If we can get four and five yards, we'll move down the field. you still got plenty of time. It's coming to the end of the third, but you still have the whole fourth. And what happens is if you're picking up four or five, then the Aggies are going to have to really start sucking in a little bit and holding that short, positive running game, and then he's going to pull it and throw More it deep. Four in the backfield in the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Danny, it's kind of flipped in half two. More penalties in the Lobos than the Aggies here in half two. I think we both got eight or close to it. Lobos only had four at the halftime break, so four here in half two now. Pushes UNM back to the 41, their own 41. And the play is blown dead. Timeout, New Mexico State. This is their first timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. I'm assuming Jerry Kill and or Nate Reiling just did not like that look, and they burned one of their timeouts here late in the third quarter. This is big right now, of course. It's 21-6, to six, Danny, and if you can get a stop during this possession, you're going to feel really good in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you can get that ball back and put some more points on the board to really just don't take your foot off the accelerator because you, we know UNM can score, and uh, they're not just going to go away. West Star is a proud supporter of the Aggies. Find them online at weststarbank.com. Safe to say, Danny, this is the best game so far this year for the Aggie defense? I think so. I think this has a, been a solid game, and the offense has done quite well as well. I think this is a very good game all the way around, outside of all of the penalties. Penalties a big issue for the Aggies in half one. They led 7-6 to six at the break. They've outscored UNM 14-0 here in half two. Final minute of the third quarter. Kendrick running the option. And a good shoulder pad tackle by Donovan King. Yeah, good presence by Donovan King. Donovan King. He saw what was happening, and he just went flat down the line of scrimmage. So he squared his shoulders. He just shuffled down, shuffled down, and didn't allow him to get the corner on there. That's a great job. He also has a big wingspan in there, and he wasn't able to get past those big, long arms. Kendrick gets four, just shy of the original line of scrimmage, so it's second down and 11. Final 15 seconds here in the third quarter. A quarter dominated by the Aggie offense. More flags. Ball start. 67 offense. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. Remember, CJ James, the center, was injured in the first half. So Isaac Gutierrez, who is a left guard, has had to move to center, and he's had a couple of penalties since then. Gutierrez, a three year starter at left guard. That's the end of the quarter. All right, so the Aggies in a good position, leading 21 to 6. They outscore the Lobos 14 0 in the third. Jerry Kills Mantra since he came to New Mexico State has been let's just get it to the fourth quarter and then see what happens. Well, right now, his team leads by 15. Second down and 16 for UNM when you come back. Second down and 16 for this UNM offense. 107 through the air for Miles Kendrick. He checks this pass down. It's caught by the running back, Washington. So a good job defensively by the Aggies. Once again, he gets chippy once again. I think the coach is in there trying to pull everyone off there. There's Trevor in the middle of it. There's there's his, uh, his cohort in crime, Chris Ojo, with him as well. These guys are having a great game. Those two are playing fantastic. The Lobos need the Aggie 44. It's third down and 15. UNM one for nine on a third down. 24% for the year, 14% their previous five. It is not any better tonight. Kendrick back to pass. Underneath, caught by Washington. 
And he's going to be shy of a first down. But only a couple yards shy. It's a gain of 14. We'll call it 13 and a half. And it's going to be fourth down in shorts for UNF. Let's see right here. We're in a zone, so it's almost like you get to this. Well, we're going to pre we're going to step back. They have 15 yards to go, so you play a little softer coverage, and I, I just it makes it hard. And the Lobos get it. They need it two. They get three. It's been a good game for Christian Washington. That was Jaden Hullaby, their bigger back at 240 pounds. He's a load. He is a load. And it was short yardage. They're behind score, so certainly they're going to go for it. But if you go back to the previous play where they're in like a prevent, I, I just don't really like the prevent because it doesn't really, it just gives them more room to operate. And they collected it, got close enough, and able to pick up the first down. I think you just need to stay with your defense full speed ahead. That's just the second time all year UNM has converted on fourth down. Right back to Washington, who just got above 50 yards for the day. He picks up eight. He now has 51 on the ground. Only 25 yards for Jones. Kendrick has run for 20. Hullaby has run for six. Weissong's had a really good game in multiple areas. Wow. Good ankle tackle. I think that was Cyrus Dumas who got his hand on it. That Lazarus was, Williams was next to him. Cyrus, it was a it was a corner blitz, so clearly he was already coming and he just Time snuck up. Man, he he snuck up, came from that from the back side, straight down, flat down the line of scrimmage and made a great tackle. So here it is at the on the left of your screen, he came straight down the line of scrimmage. He's just quick, fast. Third down and two. Chris Ojo, the first man to meet him. Looks like it's enough for a first down, though. Hullaby again, the transfer from Texas, who converted from defense to offense. 6 2 240. You come out with this power formation, it's just tough when you have some of those big hosses that are pushing up front there and you need two yards. If everyone coming at a full a full speed ahead, it's just hard to stop anyone for two yards. So the Lobos convert once again. They are using a lot of clock here, though. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, they're going to check to see if he got it. I think he did, Danny. Yeah, I, I, so. I don't think it was a poor spot at all. But they will check it, so the two teams will head to their sidelines and talk things over. Lobos finally back at Aggie Memorial for the first time since 2018. And, Danny, it's felt like a rivalry all day. You told me you had those pregame jitters like you used to get when you were playing, and we saw the tailgate lot completely full. It's been a really good day here it's on been, campus. It's been a great day, and you're right. It's from the, the moment I got up, it's just had this feeling of, okay, now you got to sit around all day long and wait for the game to start. And that makes it really hard. And it's just like, oh, you can only watch so much other football too. It's like, when do we get to play? Let's play our game. Well, here they are and they're doing a great job. Game three for the Aggies during a four game homestand. They're gonna host a really good San Jose State team next week. The Spartans are four and one this year. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. Not surprising, team that way, but the officials wanted to check it. A win tonight for the Aggies also matches their win total from each of the previous two full seasons. In 2019 and 2021, the Aggies are coming off back-to-back 2-10 and ten campaigns in their last two full years. They're trying to go to 2-5 and five and beat the Lobos here at Aggie Memorial for the first time since 2016. Beat the Lobos in Albuquerque in 2017. So the ball is at the 33 for Miles Kendrick. We've seen two quarterbacks tonight, a little bit of Justin Holiday, but mainly Miles Kendrick. He has Washington in the backfield. He swings it out to him. Washington cuts up field, and he's finally dragged down by true freshman Gabe Peterson. Well, it's a good thing Gabe was there. This is the first time that I've seen Aggies kind of get out of position a little bit as this is a little quick swing pass going to get it out to the flats. I saw some Aggies that are coming, and their angle of pursuit was behind. And what that means is if you don't get in front, if he gets the corner, you'll be chasing the whole time, and that's exactly what happened. He got some big yardage. Hand off to Washington. 
And he has enough for the first down on second down and three. Needed three, gets four. Well, that previous play when Peterson tackled Washington, Danny, that's the future of this rivalry. That's a true freshman tackling a true freshman. Yep. First and 10 for UNM. They are using a lot of clock during this drive. They trail 21 to 6, under 11 left in the fourth. They do not have a point in the half. Two made field goals in half one. Ball start, 74 offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. The offensive line has really struggled here tonight for the Lobos and head coach Danny Gonzalez. That is Greg Brown, the second, out of Pearland, Texas, a sophomore on the right side of the offensive line. That's a lot of penalties. That's 10 for the night. Not easy when your center goes down early on in the game like C.J. James did, which has altered things on the O-line for UNF. Sherrod White drops it. If it's in the backfield, it's... Jumped on by the Aggies and Cyrus Dumas. They're going to check this. And it's actually Jang who came up with it on the pile. Cyrus Dumas was jumping on it, yeah. and it squirted away to Rats and Jang. The ruling on the field is a forward incomplete pass. Second down. Well, that's pretty close, though. Yeah, it, I, it doesn't matter anyway yeah. because it's a forward pass, right. which... It looked like at the naked eye, but you're taught to play yeah. through the play, which the Aggies did. Right, and of course what we're talking about is if it's behind, it would be a lateral, and that would be a light ball. But you can see it's it's a forward pass. Cyrus, man, he is so fast yeah. and quick. I don't know how that trickled away from Dumas. It seemed like it was underneath his belly. Second down and 15 for UNF. Kendrick, how about that elusiveness? Sidesteps and hops over a defender. And he creeps down to the 22-yard line. He gets five yards on the run, which could have been a big loss. Yeah. How did he get away? That's just great. It's a great job right there being elusive. Aggie's in there waiting, very persistent and staying with it. Let's just see what he does. He's in there. No one, no one downfield. I think Lazarus is all over him anyway. And he just kind of steps aside everyone. Lobos need the 13-yard line, and Washington is taken down. Open field tackle for the newcomer, Bryce Jackson. Bryce Jackson, transfer coming over from UNLV. He's really been a leader in the backfield there. I know we've talked about him in the past and his leadership skills and what he sees on the field. Part of this has been having the experience to know that, hey, look, i got to stay back. We're going blitz for him, and I need to make sure that no one gets by me or they sneak behind. And so that was just a great job right there by Bryce. So now a big field goal for UNF. Even with this, it still makes it a 12-point game. Luke Treswicki, two for two. This one from 40 out of the hold of Aaron Rodriguez. Low snap, tough hold, and the kick is good. Well done. That was not a very good snap, but a good job. Uh, putting down the hold on a poor snap by Aaron Rodriguez, and then Drizwicki does the rest, and he's now three for three. So Luke Drizwicki had only attempted three field goals the entire year coming in. He's attempted three in this game. He's made all three. He's been the Lobo offense so far. Aggie football up a dozen when you come back. And the Aggies here tonight, Danny, they're in a unique position. Nine minutes to go, and they're trying to hang on for a win, a position they really haven't been in this year because the Hawaii game was a little lopsided for the first three plus quarters. It, it was, and, and although Hawaii scored some points coming back for the third or fourth quarter ish, it still it was in the Aggies' possession to really handle that game. Not so much here, though. George Steinkamp, who is handling kickoffs but not field goals, will kick off to Jonathan Brady and Lawrence Dixon. And Brady will take a knee, and the Aggies will start at the 25-yard line. So how will the true freshman, Gavin Frakes, manage this football game here in the final 8:53, as he tries to get his second win as a starter? That's the big question right now. Can he make the throws down the stretch? Can he handle this football game down the stretch? A true freshman here in a rivalry game. 
I saw um, Coach Mitchell with his back to us as he was listening in on it. I think a lot of it depends on his guys up front, too. His guys, his offensive line, they do a good job. Everything will be in control. That's where it starts. Aggies, of course, would love to use some clock during this drive. Hand off to Jamani Jones. Aggies have rotated three running backs. Jones gets three. It's been Jones, Thomas, Watkins, and we still haven't seen Tim Gans, who was really good a couple games ago against Hawaii. Aggies bring in an extra tight end here. Trevor Stevens came in, and Bryce Childress, the St. Louis, Missouri native, went off at wide receiver. So they're going to use clock and try to run the football. Try to win this game on the back of their running backs. And their tight ends as well. Stevens, a blocking tight end. And nothing is doing there for Jamani Jones. No game. So I get what Coach coach back is doing I, I mean he's trying to use the clock we're going to run the ball we're going to keep the we, last thing we need to do is stop the clock when you throw the ball incomplete pass it stops the clock right so i get that problem is is if you stay with a very conservative play call it puts you in a third and long position where you have to do something you have to throw the ball anyway and if not then you'll punt it away so it, it's a it's a tough one for him still a two possession game and a lobo offense that has not scored a touchdown tonight Third and seven for the Aggie offense and Gavin Frakes. Frakes will whistle a pass, and it's batted away by linebacker Rico Hina. So the Aggies only took about a minute 50 off the clock, and now they have to punt. I didn't like this series, Adam. So I, I just thought we we just we needed more on the first and second so we didn't get in this third and long position and end up having to run around, run around, and try to throw the ball. So we've got a couple guys in the pattern to the right. Gavin uses his legs to keep it alive. You can see him right there in the middle. But they're in good position. They're all over. There's nothing to be had there. So um, so we punt it away and, depend on, and leave it back on the defense. And now the side of the field where the Aggies are punting from. Josh Carlson is punting into the wind, which was a huge advantage for the Aggies earlier in the return game. Luke Weissaw gets a return, and he is dragged down. Wow. Our special teams, J.J. Durbel, big play. Big punt as well from Carlson. It, yeah, that was a great punt. That's a punt of 40 yards into the wind for Josh Carlson, the redshirt junior from Gilbert, Arizona. Durbel, the tackle, are in special teams. A loss of six on the return for Wysaw. Thank you, Tatiana. Yeah, a reporter asked the question. They said, who are your leaders? Jerry Kill responded, Brohard. Trevor Brohard, and he's been good here tonight for the Aggie defense. Flat comes in again. Number 15 offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Danny, that's on the wide receiver, Luke Weissoff. That's a mental error. Yeah, that, that's a tough one right there. That's, it's starting to, to matter, seven minutes left. That previous drive, by the way, for UNN, it took 10 minutes and 56 seconds. They ran 20 plays, and all they got out of it was a 40-yard field goal. So the Aggie defense is making the Lobo offense work for every single yard right now. And that might be the difference is the Lobos took 11 minutes on their previous drive and only got three out of it. I think clearly that was their strategy. Sterling Webb on that last play up front for the Aggies. He's really causing a lot of havoc in there. Just taking up two or three guys in that gap. There he is, number 26, right in the middle. He's playing a good, solid game up front there. Sherrod White, the running back. Heavy pressure again. Passes, almost intercepted. Andre Selden almost had his first career pick. Oh, my goodness. That was pick six, wasn't it? Adam? Yeah, he it gets was. That? Yeah. Nothing between him and the goal line but green. Great, great positioning. He's sitting back there waiting. Pressure. Chris Ojo bringing the pressure. And there it is mm. right there. Hit him in a bad spot. Hit him in the hands. Kendrick, 13 of 21 through the air for 127. He did throw a pick in the first half. Donovan King got his first career interception. Andre Selden is going to have nightmares about that one tonight. Almost had it. 
Kendrick throws over the outstretched arms of Lazarus Williams. And then a host of Aggies right there to meet Christian Washington. Man, we got six, seven Aggies at, at the ball. I think they were ready for that. I think they saw that coming. Coach must have coached them up to said, look, when we get in this position, look for the quick screen there. It's going to be over top. And, uh, man, they were ready to go. That's a loss of three in the Lobos half to punt. They don't want to here with 631 left, and they're down by 12, but they have to. Or they're out in the field right now. Big plays defensively when it was needed the most for Nate Dreiling's defense. The young D.C., his defense has played really well. This is a boomer for Aaron Rodriguez. Lawrence Dixon slips back to his feet, yeah. and he is at the 27-yard line. A 55-yard punt for Rodriguez, who is doing his job here tonight. Have, had to do a little extra jine in there. It's been that way since the start. Aggies trying to finish off their first win against the Lobos since 2017. They lead by a dozen with the ball. 6.06 left. Adam Young, Danny Nee, Tatiana Favela back with you here in the 112th installment of the Rio Grande rivalry. Lobos trying to come from behind to win their fourth in a row against the Aggies. It's a rivalry, Danny, that dates back to 1894. And before 2020, the Aggies and Lobos had played for 74 consecutive years. Four of the previous seven matchups have been decided by three points or less. So this one's pretty tight again. And this is the latest Rio Grande rivalry game since 2001, and it's the latest scheduled game since 94. The game in 01 was scheduled for September 15th, but it was pushed back because of 9-11. So usually they meet early September, sometimes even late August. It's a little different this year, and the Aggies are looking for a monumental win here in year one of the Jerry Kill era. Star Thomas is now the running back. Thomas pushing the pile. Well done. He is past the 30. He's up around the 31. It's a gain of four. Second half drives for the Aggie offense. They punted on their first drive, then back-to-back -back drives with touchdowns, and then punted on their fourth drive in this half. This is their fifth series offensively in half two. Well, the big thing now is, right, you're going to hand the ball off, and then everyone's going to get behind and help push him along, which is exactly what's happening there, and you get four yards out of it. And not only that, but you keep the clock running. Lobos still have all three timeouts left. The Aggies have burned one so far in the half. Back to the ground with Star Thomas. So it was Jumani Jones on the previous series. Thomas up near the first down. He gets five and a half. And now it's the Homer Louisiana native who ran for 144 two games ago against Hawaii. Trying to help the Aggies seal their second win this year. Offensive line up front starts there, stops there, and that's what uh, the offensive people like to say. It all begins there. And, and this, in the last couple of plays, that offensive line has been firing off, getting low, staying to the pads, and pushing them back, allowing us to get three or four yards a carry, which gives us a third and a very short. So now, of course, expect that they're going to they're going to stuff the box and bring everyone. 11 carries, 53 yards, and a touchdown for Thomas. His third straight game with a touchdown. Running back is Amate Watkins, and the Aggies call a timeout. Timeout. Danny, we're talking a lot about the running game here in the fourth quarter, but that man right there, number nine in crimson, Gavin Frakes. Once again, he's managed the football game well. He's 10 for 17 for 119, two touchdowns, no picks. And, he, and he's run the ball quite well. Um, so he's, he's had a heck of a game. He's done quite well. And those passes for those touchdowns, Adam, those were, those were nice passes that were difficult. They weren't easy ones. These were tough ones to thread in there. And he just did a great job. He's got some moxie to him. He's a good leader. In fact, we had him on the radio coaches show a couple weeks ago, and he said, I love trying to be a leader, and I'm still trying to get a little more vocal. It's hard to do when you're in a huddle as a true freshman quarterback at the FPS level, but he's been working on being more vocal, and he's trying to lead the Aggies to their second win, and a big one here in his first year collegiately. 
Monte Watkins able to jump over the pile, and it looks like it's going to be spotted well. And give the Aggies a first down. That offensive line, they just fired out nice and low. They cut everyone and then allowed, and allowed the, the running back to really just jump over the pile. But that's that offensive line up front. Starts there, and, and as long as they continue to do that and hold their own at four minutes, it's going to be good. See them right there? You can just see the big lunge forward by that offensive line that allowed running back then to get in the air and pick up that first down. That's a great job by that line. Amante Watkins will stay in on first down and 10. Wing to the left is Eric Marsh, big senior out of Buckeye, Arizona. Watkins trying to follow Marsh, drags a tackler, Jarek Reed, for maybe an extra yard. And you would expect the Lobos to start using timeouts, and they will. Timeout, New Mexico. This is their first timeout of the half, 30-second timeout. It feels like a one-possession game, but it's a two-possession game right now. Aggies ahead by 12. They've outscored the Lobos here in this half, 14-3. to three. We heard Jerry Kill say a lot, Danny, leading into the season, let's just get the game to the fourth. And I feel like if we get the game into the fourth, good things will happen, and that's what the Aggies have done tonight, really for the first time all year, where it was a little tight for about three quarters, and now they're trying to finish off a win here in the fourth. This is what Jerry Kill's done pretty much his entire coaching career. It's not going to be high-scoring finesse wins, but he's going to get the job done. He's going to use clock and get the game to the fourth quarter. 224 overall of offense for the Aggies, 105 on the ground, 119 through the air. 240 of total offense for UNM. Star Thomas with nowhere to go. Forward progress to the 38. No gain. Timeout Lobos again. Yeah, this is going to start using to stop, stop the clock. Looking to get the ball back. They're going to have to put a couple points. Timeout New Mexico. This is their second timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. And, Danny, we're seeing a shift in this program right now where we talked about offense for so many years and the defense struggled the clock operator, year after year. The clock operator, please reset the game clock to 324. But three, right two, now, four. if you look at this game tonight, yeah, the offense has made plays, no question, taking nothing away from the offense. But I, I think the final result is going to be the defense helped the Aggies really win this football game. And... I don't want to say the defense won the game, but holding the Lobos to nine, that's that's a good look. Yeah, kept them, kept them out of the end zone, right? So just field goals. But in, And I think you said it earlier that they've had this bend, don't break mentality with this defense, and that's just what they've done tonight. So, yeah, they give some points up, uh, but it's a bend, not break. And, and I think you're right. I think they, they pitched a heck of a game tonight. Aggie defense allowed 40 points per game a season ago. They allowed 41 in 2019 and 2018. They allowed 30 in 2017 when they had Terrell Hanks and Dalton Harrington and Roy Lopez. Timeout, New Mexico. This is their third and final timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. And honestly, when this one's all said and done tonight, if the Aggies leave the game only allowing nine points, I think their average is going to be below 30 for the first time in a long time because that 2017 squad only allowed 30 per game. But this team might be below that. So that's encouraging, Danny. Nate Ryling has been really fun to watch. And he's only 31. He has a bright future. And he's coaching this defense up right now. And he's exciting to talk to. So the times that I've been able to speak with him on the phone, he's just exciting. He's a he's a good thinker. He's a critical thinker. And he's just it would just be someone that I'd love to play for. And so he's got an idea of how this defense could be run, this 4 5 that he has. I asked him, well, how did you come up with this? Where is it you get this? And like most coaches, what they do is they get a thought, an idea, and a base defense. Defense, and then they just borrow from other coaches along the way, and you end up where you are. And he's got a good defense, and he's got a good scheme. The Aggies will punt and then look for another stop. Tremarius Lewis is back deep. He calls for a fair catch. So one more stop, and I'm sure that's what Nate Reidling and the position coaches are preaching right now is just give us one more. They haven't allowed a touchdown yet tonight. A lot of credit goes to 
Luke Drizwicki, the kicker for UNM. There was a lot of question marks around the kicking game for both squads, and Drizwicki has gone three for three to keep the Lobos in the game tonight. So now you get into this little softer defense. There you see Trevor right there in the middle. So it's back them up just a little bit because they have to put two scores on the board, so they're going to have to go for something deep. You don't want to have a ball that's going to break you from... And that will help right there, too, if you can get Lazarus to come in there and scrambling quarterback make a tackle. Hey, the defense has played good. You know, we talked about Trevor. Chris Chris has 14 tackles, 10 solo, and one tackle for a loss as well. So those middle backers, they heck, they had a heck of a game here. Let's see what happens here. Got a three-man rush. So there's only three guys in the pattern. Lazarus comes off his block and makes a tackle. That's fantastic. Third sack this year for Lazarus Williams, and this pass is incomplete, broken up by Donovan King and Cyrus Dumas. Third down and 12 coming up for the Lobo. Four see, down territory no matter what. Yeah, I see the coaches pushing the Aggies back. Get back in the huddle, get back in the huddle, start using your head. Don't, don't get anything stupid here to drag this thing on. Only 124 through the air for UNM, just 114 on the ground. Lobos in danger of falling to two and five and losing their fourth in a row. They were two and one early on this year. Kendrick back to throw, throws it underneath, caught by Christian Washington. Washington stays on his feet. The Aggies thought he was down earlier in the play. The whistle never blew, and credit Washington for continuing the play. Yeah, determination. He just didn't give up. We had down, we were tackling him down around the ankles, and he was just stepping through those and was able to push that to the first down, just pure determination. Gain of 19 on a third down for Washington. The previous play is under further review. They're going to see if he was down, if his knee hit the turf. He was down. He was a couple of yards shy of the first down, wasn't he, Danny? Yeah, if he was down. And it's hard to tell from up here, so it's good that they're going to take a look at it. And part of part of what's, you know, the Aggies are in this 4-2-5 base defense, and so they're playing really, really deep. And so here it is right here, a little throw underneath. Chris kind of over-pursues that a bit. We have Trevor is chasing him, and there he yeah, is down. I think so. Yeah, that left knee. Yeah. Nonetheless, though, if you're the Aggie defense, you still need to finish off the play right there, and I'm sure that'll be emphasized in film, even if this is overturned. Yep. And the crowd can see the video review on the video board, so their reaction is the same as ours, and you can see that the knee was down. Impressive balance, though, by Washington to stay on his feet, even though his knee was down. Aggie's starting to loosen up a little bit. Maybe they're feeling like, okay, I think we may have this. There's a grind you out. Defensive game in the first half. 7-6 to six was the halftime score. The Aggies got the ball first to start half two, but they punted on their first drive. Even though they had good field position after a Jonathan Brady quality return. Trying to make sure they do get this right. Mike Catone is our referee tonight. We've had a lot of flags, a lot of penalties. And while we have a moment, I want to say big thanks to our entire crew. An outstanding job tonight. Director Vinny Conway, producer Rito Rodriguez, engineer Alex Ramirez, Marcos Cueto, Anthony Casals with us, talent stats. An outstanding job, as always, by our crew. Big thanks to them. <coughs> 2.14 remaining. And now we'll get the call from Mike Cattell. After further review, the runner's knee was down at the 32-yard. It will be fourth down. And he is shy of the first down. So the knee was down. The longer review than a lot of people expected, but they get the call right. And now the Aggie fans will rise to their feet on fourth down. UNM did convert on fourth down earlier in half one. Yeah, I think a lot of time when they're looking there, they're trying to figure out, well, where do we put the ball? Where's the ball go?
Washington on the carry, met by Brohard, spins away from another tackle before he's finally taken down by Andre Selden, who had him by his shoe tops. And the Lobos convert on fourth down for the second time tonight. And he is running very hard. The Lobos do not have any timeouts left. Gain of seven for Washington. Chains are set. Clock starts to move under two left. Lobos down a dozen. Trying to score and then kick an onside kick. Pass is incomplete. It's thrown behind Weissall. Well, what a game. You know, and it was nice that uh, there was a great crowd, too, for, for the Aggies because it's always fun to play in these important games and have a crowd that's with you, that's behind you. It just makes it, it, just makes it so much more fun. Fourteen catches for Washington out of the backfield in this one. 64 yards. Here's Kendrick, the quarterback, back to throw, and he throws it again to Washington. Tackle made by Bryce Jackson. Late hit, though. And that's a veteran. That's Chris Ojo. Ojo trying to say he was juggling the football, which is why he made the hit. Let's take a look. So out to Washington again, who's had a great second half here. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number three of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And the, the tough part, Adam, is that if, if the runner's still trying to run and break the tackle and there's no whistle, when, when do you stop? When do you, when do you know it's like, okay, that's enough? It's tough. Seemed like at first Ojo was making the juggling motion, but I think he was making the running motion like he was still moving, yeah. which is why I tried to finish him off. Kendrick throws it right. Good catch is made by Sherrod White. Met immediately by cornerback Linwood Crump. Lobos cannot stop the clock. They have no timeouts left. Gain of nine. So the objective for the Aggies is just let them catch the ball, fine. Catch the ball, but you got to catch the ball in front, so nothing deep. A sack would be huge right here. Big hit by Brohard, oh. and it falls incomplete. Almost picked off. Lobos wanted a roughing the passer penalty on Brohard on the hit on the quarterback. Trevor's going to put a little icing on this. It's going to be my senior year. I'm going to remember this game because I'm bringing it all. The incomplete pass does stop the clock. Ball is at the 33 of the Aggies. 102 left. Third and one. Ball start again. Ball start. 66 offense. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Right tackle, Tavian for Danny. It's been a tale of two halves of penalties. The yep. Aggies have had a couple in this half, but it's been a lot on UNM, a lot of the Aggies in the first half. Yep, I th they're up to 12 now, so that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. And although this really didn't affect, this last penalty didn't affect the outcome so much, it still shows that there's sloppiness, and it's the it's the discipline that the coaches really want to get back to. It's like Correction. New Mexico State called timeout prior to the false start. Therefore, it will be timeout. New Mexico State, this is their third and final timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. So prior to the penalty, is that what he said there, Danny? So it's going to be third and one instead of third and six, and there will not be the penalty on the false start. Yeah, I think they, they, they said he would call timeout before the penalty, so it wouldn't count. So they're at 2-11 now. Interesting. Jerry Kill, you know, as he talked to some of the players and trying to rally the troops around what he can do, and as I was telling you before the game, he was telling the players, you know what, I can do this. I, I, I like this place. It's a hidden jewel. I can make it happen here. Stay with me on this journey. And uh, he's a believer, and he is a, a pusher, and he just does not give up. 
So third and one instead of third and six. Lobos need the 32. Aggies show heavy pressure, and the pass is hold in by the tight end, Elijah Queen. His first catch of the night, his third this year. He gets four, and the Lobos stay alive as they move the chains. Lots of pressure, gets the ball out, nice catch. Got rid of it before we got to him, but the clock keeps rolling. Yeah, Lobos trying to get set here, just over 40 seconds left. Trying to score a touchdown to make this interesting. Isaiah Reed, the transfer from Murray State, brings down Kendrick. Lobos can't stop the clock. 22 seconds left. Here it is right there. You saw that was, uh, we'll see it again. But it's a, it was a three-man rush. That's what we have up front there. And the Aggies are just feeling invincible and just can't be blocked. Reed throws, and it's caught by Andrew Erickson, who also gets out of bounds to stop the clock with eight seconds left. So the Lobos are just running out of time here. Eight seconds left. Third down and seven. Big sack for Isaiah Reed on the Aggie D-line. Washington in the backfield with the quarterback, Miles Kendrick. Kendrick rolling left, heavy pressure. Taken down by Chris Ojo. And that's the finisher. The Aggies defeat the Lobos for the first time since 2017. And it's Chris Ojo who seals the deal. Chris Ojo and Trevor Brohard played fantastic games up front there. And so I'm so happy for those guys. This is a, a big game and... Um, it's just so much fun to, to win it in your in your place too, right? In your hometown. Well, that was the perfect ending too for the Aggie defense that played so well tonight. A couple of sacks in the final 30 seconds for Isaiah Reed and Chris Ojo. The Aggies do not allow a touchdown. They allow three field goals. That is all defensively. They defeat the Lombos at home for the first time since 2016. And this is a big, pivotal win early on in the Jerry Kill era. Ojo, the Sutherland, California native, finishes it off. Postgame comes up next.